Here's an unfortunate fact. The guys with the biggest calves are the ones that don't even work them out. All right, what does that mean? Genetics play a big role in your muscular development. Here's something else. Who cares? Does it matter? You can't control it. Go to the gym anyway. Train your body. Stop comparing yourself to people with different genetics or circumstances. This, uh, I feel like this lesson eventually is learned if you stick to working out long enough. Eventually you get to this growth place where you're like, who cares? You know? But in the beginning, it's mostly like, it's tough. Why don't I look like yeah. that guy? Why is that person stronger? Yeah. What's going on? When here? there's a deficit, you know, or there's a visible, especially one of those things, people are like, oh man, I really want my calves to grow. It just becomes an obsession. And then it's like, well, you know, somebody that just doesn't even really lift weights has like amazing calves. That's you know, a it's, hard pill. It's funny though, because people will say that, but then they, at the same, in the same breath, they're not prioritizing it. Like it's the most there's important There's still thing. a lot that they could do. Yeah. yeah. Like there, I mean, is as annoying as it was uh, to, to, I mean, obviously when I had to get on stage, like that was obviously a thought to my mind. Like, okay, if I'm going to get up here and present my physique, I got to make sure I bring my calves up. I'm in shorts. Like that's going to look really weird if I'm like so disproportionate where I'm massive up top and I have these skinny calves. And so it became a, a huge priority. Now, for the first time in my life, like I actually treated it as if it was any other muscle group that like I had to develop and I had to bring up, which means I prioritized it in the workouts. It started the week out. It was the first exercise I always did. I increased the volume. I increased the frequency and st stuck with it consistently where in the past, I would say, oh man, training calf sucks or oh, my calves suck. But then it was like, they were also treated as like the redheaded stepchild. I never freaking addressed them. Yeah. Or if I were to miss something, it would be those. Or I never really started. A, like How many people start their workout yeah. with calves? Yeah, yeah, nobody does. <laughs> yeah. It's Rarely always ever. an afterthought. It is. Yeah, I, it's um, our tendency is to want to make excuses because otherwise it's a mirror. Otherwise you have to look in the mirror and be like, all right, what am I not doing? Because it's very easy to look at other people and say uh, genetics, steroids, mm -hmm. they don't have the same job. They don't have, they have all the time it's in the, the world. the comparison trap. The comparison trap. It's terrible. And what it does is actually disempowers you, right? So- yeah. There's a, a false belief that if you accept responsibility, now it's going to suck. Well, it kind of sucks because it puts the ball in your court, but it's more empowering because there's a lot you can do. And it doesn't matter what the other people around you look like and what they can do. There's always someone stronger, always someone yeah. Better, bigger, better circumstances, I guess. Nobody's like perfectly balanced in every muscle or in every like strength pursuit. It's like, I, I don't know. I guess that's just sort of the thing for me. It's like I, I, I try not to get into the whole like, well, I don't, I, this isn't working. I mean, I do like figure out where I'm weak and I'm like, okay, I got to get better at this and do whatever I can. But once you start comparing your progress to somebody else, that's such like a, a, a losing uh, uh, pursuit. Yeah. It's just what do like, you? Oh man. Why do you guys think though that we uh, we've put so much emphasis on the calves and that it, like I look at calves like your forearms, like that they're they're the the extension of the arm or yeah. extension of the leg. It's their oh why uh, why that muscle? In yeah, particular? like like have you ever heard anyone be like oh your war look what's where your why would your forearms yeah. look how weak your forearms are and they can actually be just as underdeveloped in comparison yeah. to your bodies, but no one ever says that. So what do you, what is it about? The, oh, I think legs in general are tend to be skipped by guys. So in general, yeah. legs and of the legs, if they do work them out. Then the calves tend to be skipped because it's not like a beach muscle. Yeah, it's not it's, a, it's a probably showy comes muscle. from that. You yeah, know what? Because yeah, the but, guys that just get their upper body workouts in and no, yeah. it is a and, beach muscle though. If yeah. you're in shorts, your calves are being totally showed not. off just as much as your forearms oh. are. So I just isn't it weird? Like what? Yeah. What in our culture? decided that because very it's like easily, the bicep of legs you know it's like yeah it's, very easily with that logic it could have been the forums yeah. you know why why did we decide as a culture like that would be the thing that we would we would target and i would i would make the case that they're as underdeveloped or or like focused on as the forums like there's plenty of people that have small forearms, especially guys, some guys that have massive well, biceps and triceps. All right, well, then, I guess we could get deeper because- Yeah, uh, let's start shaming forearms, small know, people. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. You know, no, we can't, okay, we can get a little deeper. Here's the interesting thing about calves from a performance standpoint, okay? This is where it gets weird. Big or small calves, like some of the highest performing athletes in the world 
have high, short calves, long Achilles, and they don't have like look at some of the best athletes. Yeah, look at their lower the basketball legs. players right now. Yeah, yeah skinny and, legs. And, and so you know, so I, I don't. It's I don't think it's necessarily evolutionarily speaking connected to your ability to hunt or defend yourself, like broad shoulders, strong hands, strong forearms, wide back, where, you know, that tells you a lot, right? Somebody who's a really underdeveloped back, you're probably not very uh, physical. You probably don't have very good performance. Whereas calves, you know what they find with calves is like big, long, meaty calves tend to, you know, you, you tend to see that on like strength athletes, probably because it gives you a strong, solid base. And then like running and jumping, there tends to be a, um, it tends to, to, to move towards yeah, higher, high, short insertion. shorter type calves. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But from a, I guess from an aesthetic standpoint, right. But yeah, you like, you never hear, you, look, this is, let's, let's talk about young men. When are, when do you hear females talk about another guy's body and be like, Oh my God, you see his calves. So, <laughs> like you never hear that. Right. It's always abs, arms, yeah. chest, something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. So pro and, that's probably why. And I feel like uh, forearms are forearms are better connected to like real world strength yes. and like, yes. So I, you'll never meet a, a really, really strong guy with underdeveloped, with underdeveloped forearms. forearms. Yeah. Like he's going to have, he's going to normally have a yeah, really like impossible. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of funny that, that I don't know that that's, that isn't talked about as, as much. Yeah. I, think, I mean, I think it's silly to, again, the original <laughs> point compared to other people, we're all unique and different. And so it is what it is, but I've always thought it was interesting that nobody put, any emphasis on the forearm just, the same way that you put on the calf. And yeah, just, I mean, the bigger conversation is the whole comparing yourself to other people. Like genetics are interesting. I remember there was this dude who came to work out at one of the gyms that I worked at and he looked like, he looked like a 165 pound dude. I mean, he looked, you know, kind of fit, but I would have never looked at him and be like, you lift. He kind of looked like a fit guy. He was wearing a rash guard. So it's like a long sleeve rash guard. And he gets under the bench and I, I, you know, I'm just in the gym. I'm, I'm working with clients, you know, doing my walkthrough and I walked through once and he's warming up with 225 and it was moving pretty fast. It's like, wow, he's pretty strong for his size. Well, I come back through three plates are on the, on the, on the bar and he's benching that. Then I didn't see for a while. And then I go back through, he's got five plates on the bench. Now I'm looking at him because I'm like, for sure he's going to hurt himself. He's doing partials or something stupid. I've seen people do this before. Oh, I'm going to yeah. have to jump in yeah. and grab the bar and help him. And this dude put up five plates. Uh, he was doing Full singles range. with it. Full range. Wow. All the way down. Pause all the way up. Yeah. And I... I, it blew, and so, of course, I introduced myself. I'm like, dude, I've never seen like yeah, this. Doesn't make. I said, no, no offense. I said, the, the physics just don't make yeah, sense. Here. I literally yeah. said this. To him. I said, no offense, but you don't look like you can lift this much weight. <laughs> and I said, what do you do? And he's like, yeah. I compete. Like, Thanks. Yeah, I'm a yeah. power lifter, and you know, I, I, bench is one of my strongest. So it's like genetics are interesting with how how some people have like the, just the right leverage and CNS activation and who knows what. Yeah. So crazy. It's just so wild to see something like that. It, it made yeah. absolutely no sense. And then, of course, we've had. We've had employees like that, right? Where they go, they, they barely work out and they just surpass us in, <laughs> in development. Even though, we fire them immediately. But I mean, what are you going to do? Like, like at the end of the day, you know, you have control over yourself and who cares? I mean, I honestly think, you know, it's funny is that it, I feel the same way, which I know bothers people when I talk about this too, with the whole like feeling, um, coming from a place of not having a lot of privilege when it comes to like, Oh God, the same thing. Exactly. Like I feel, I feel that that was an advantage to me because it forced me to build good habits and behaviors and mm -hmm. work hard and be resilient. Totally. And so that the character that's developed from that person, I think has served me in life 10 times better than had I had like a silver spoon in my ass. You go the other direction with your, your development on your body. Part of what I think made me so uh, into exercise and nutrition, because it was difficult, because I didn't have the genetics, because I was terrible, because I was weak, I was skinny, I was all these things that I was insecure about. And it, so it forced me to like really go deep and figure all this out. Had I been the kid who like already looked – like everyone had that kid in high school that already looked like he lifted weights before he even lifted weights, yeah. and then he touched weights, and then he just doubled his size. Like I had a friend like that and was mm -hmm. strong as shit. Like I don't know. I'm, I'm, it, I probably wouldn't have landed in this field. Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't have cared to go that deep and to learn that much and to work so hard at it because, so I don't know. It's funny how yeah, we I always feel like we all share that, you know, yeah. like, and, and again, from an athletic perspective, I was always chasing speed and I was so pissed off that like everybody was faster than me, like off the shoot. And so I had to like learn how to like 
get better at being predictive and watching film, like breaking everything down, like training every chance I could in the gym, like every last bit. I trained with a track team for like two years and like barely got like, you know, 0.1, you know, off <laughs> my, my 40 time. And it was fucking frustrating, yeah. you know, and it really irritated me that these genetic gifts, like some of my friends like, like that got, um, you know, full ride to, uh, to UCLA and then blew it. You know, and it's just like I just want to slap them. You know, like I've been more busting my ass. Yeah, the I th the, the okay, okay. Of course, your genetic propensity for things like intelligence, your opportunities that are you're presented with that you're not responsible for. Maybe the people your parents know, the schools that all plays a role. But if there was one, and it's a, it's a look, it's a combination of factors that that we we would have to use to predict someone's potential success and failure. So it's, that's the complete picture would be to look at everything. But if you had to pick one, that would, that would be the greatest predictor of success in any area. It's mindset. Mm -hmm. There's no other yeah. greater predictor than somebody's mindset. You, you just said it, Adam. I mean, people who know, you know, your past knew how you grew up and what it did to you is it, is it, it you had a mindset around it where it became an advantage. If you had a different mindset, you would have ended up like every other person who, who grew up in your situation, not very well. It's the mindset that makes the difference, always. And to start, this is why they call, this is why they talk about the immigrant advantage. When you look at immigrants and you look at their children, so people who come to this country and then they have kids, when you compare them to the same race natives, people who have been here for generations, so same color, same everything, right? Controlled everything. Immigrants, the, the children of immigrants outperform them. They have, they call the immigrant advantage. It's the mindset because their parents came here, obviously because this was a better opportunity. And so it's like, they have this, they have a different mindset. They see the opportunity, they see what's going on. And they're less likely to be like, oh my God, I can't control anything. Uh, I'm a victim in everything that I do or whatever. Um, this, you have to learn with fitness. You absolutely have to learn this because I can very easily, I can come up with a million reasons why I can't get fit, healthy, stronger, leaner. I can come yeah, up with them. It's easy. very easy that's to easy. come up with a million reasons why. Or I can be like, fine, I don't care. What can I focus on? What can I do? What do I have control over? Focus on that. That right there will dictate your success with fitness more than anything else. Yeah. By far. Yeah. Today's workout program giveaway is MAPS Split. Here's how you can win that program. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. We'll let you know in the comment section if you want. We also have a sale going on this month. Maps Bands is half off and the Hard Gainer Bundle is half off. You can get both of them with that discount by clicking on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Hey, did you know that uh, before you came in this morning, Justin was sharing a story that he says he talked about on Mind Pump that I don't ever remember hearing the story. And I thought it was really funny because I was like, you know, we, we oh, now have had, I'm, I'm we've now had some of our kids work for the company and stuff, not mine, but some <laughs> of you guys' kids work for the company. And I'm like, yeah. I would totally do this. Yeah. So I guess when he worked for his dad, when he was younger, did you know that his dad also did a random drug test for the company or the business? Yeah. Did you know that? So he could get you drunk. Yeah. Did I bring that up? <laughs> yeah. I don't remember that. I think I you did I tell us that. that. And so the, my point of bringing it up to you now, because obviously we've had like, the kids come through and help out around the business. Like, how do so I that, drug test my like, kids? Yeah, yeah. Would, I would yeah. totally do that. Like I would totally be like, if I was like, is Max fucking smoking weed already? Or was, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. It'd be, and he's working for the company. I'd be like, oh, by the way, mind pumps yeah. uh, drug testing now. We new new policy. But he made it seem like it's like everybody's doing it. And then I find out I was the only one that did it. <laughs> He did it like that. Not cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hilarious. I mean, I get it. I was, was hanging out with a dad move. Yeah. I would so do that. I was hanging out with a bunch of stoners, you know, no doubt. Like, I'm sure that they were like, oh man, like we got to check up and So see. looking back, you were pissed, I'm assuming. Super pissed. Okay. Yeah. Now, as a dad, what do you think? Well, He's it's, it, it's conflicted because it actually pushed me towards <laughs> smoking weed. Smoking weed. Okay, so that's an interesting yeah, perspective. I then. wasn't even doing it. I was a very good kid. Okay, so let's put let's 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 put, play this out with your boys. They're working for the company in a year, uh, and you all of a sudden you think Everett's getting high. 
Wow. Or you hear he's got friends that are getting high. First of all, we can't drug he, test everybody because we'd all fail. <laughs> <laughs> Dad's the biggest hypocrite ever. It's, yeah. it's random. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, 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 yeah, it's random. It's like, you know, you were first. Employee A, B, C. They're like, God damn, these three guys. Oh, man. They have all kinds of stuff in their system. We're going to find out who they are. No, no, no. Uh, we're going to keep it anonymous. I don't know. Dude, I, honestly, I would hope more that like we just have an open conversation and, and communication between each other that uh, I, I wouldn't need to like test him and like you know try and get one on yeah. him you know like i just don't feel like we have that kind of relationship i mean i don't think any of us have that with our kids so i think you're right like um i still think i would do it though <laughs> i still think i would pull that move i think i would, I would do it on his friends <laughs> all day <laughs> we'll hire his friends and then test them and you know like what's, i'll screen them all out what's the saying like parents who are too strict uh raise sneaky kids I think yeah. is, what, is what it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, I think that's true. I think so. It happened to me. Yeah, because I uh, so I'm I try work on this, but Jessica's so good at it. She does not react. Mm. Like the kids will say stuff to her, and mm. I'm in the background, and I'm like, I gotta leave the room because I'm I know my face. <laughs> I'll give away you know my cards, and she just doesn't react. She's like, oh really? What happened? Oh okay. What did your friend say? And she'll laugh or whatever, and they'll just tell her. You know everything that's going on, and I'm in the I'm sweating in the back, like oh my god, what, I can't believe that happened. You know, but she she has this great conversation with them, and then it allows us to be influential. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there's no influence. You have zero influence as a parent. Like my parents and I talked about nothing, nothing, not sex, not drugs, nothing controversial whatsoever. Me either. Yeah. Had no conversation about this kind of stuff. So yeah. if my parents came to me to talk to me about stuff. I would have been like, I don't know what you're talking about. No, that's <laughs> yeah. not what happened. I don't know. Right. Not all, mine. All defensive. Yeah. Yeah, totally. yeah. I mean, I think I'm on, I'm on both sides of this with one. Like, I think I could see myself still being like, oh man, son, the company's doing this. Like I would totally like down. <laughs> no, you wouldn't it. even say anything. Yeah. You just give it to him. Yeah. What's this? Oh, everybody. We just. Well, yeah. Here. I mean, if it's standard practice, like, come on. Cause yeah. here's how I, I would fine. also like think of it too, is like, listen, uh, I mean, in the real world, this could happen. You know yeah. what I'm saying in the real world, oh, you could be you working hired. for a company and, and there's consequences if you were like, so, yeah. you know, and then here's the thing, if it came out, right. Like, let's say he, I, I test him and if, and he does pass, then the conversation is really like, you know, why didn't you communicate this to me? Like you, you could have uh, shared this with your dad and this is something that we could have talked about or worked, you know what I'm saying? And like, you know, I you're lucky it's, it's my company, so we're not firing you, yeah. you know, but you could have got fired over something like this. And so that, so I think there's like an opportunity for, a conversation to 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 get us to have to did talk you, more. Did about you it. hear about the, yeah. the the government a while ago was going to hire people for um, internet and technology like hacking and they needed like really smart engineers <laughs> and they had to stop drug testing them. Oh, I bet because they were all failing. They couldn't find yeah, anybody. Yeah. Like they get these really all good hackers. Coke. Uh, you don't pass a drug test, damn it! <laughs> so they stopped drug testing people. That was like the. Uh, did you ever finish that that series that was that we were all watching the um, the telemarketer ones? Telemarketing. No, I didn't oh, watch yeah. it. Oh, you didn't finish that? No, 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 bro! I can't believe you did. That's something you no. would totally like. Yeah, I know. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah you have to watch the that. Craziest, shadiest characters. Yeah, and just like yeah, we can't drug test these guys. Such characters, man. <laughs> yeah. They're like all on one. Hey, Everybody isn't the UF, on isn't the UFC not drug testing? Did we talk yeah, about this? Yeah, they Usada like pulled out. Right, it's their. Just handling in house now. Okay. So okay, I have like uh, conspiracy theories around that, but do Connor, we know? Right? That's what. I, yeah, yeah, it's kind of strange that Connor don't look natural no more. Yeah, I don't think anyone thinks Connor's natural. Um, I think everybody is pretty like you know it's pretty obvious that he's taken something right. Yeah. Um, and it's obvious of the pool right that he that he has yeah. for the UFC. I yeah, mean, there's a money, no money machine. For he's them. a money machine. It doesn't matter who he fights. John Jones can be all jacked coming back. Dude. It, so I'm wondering, is it like did they do that just to make it easier for him to come back, or is there more going on? Because I don't know enough, right? So I don't. Yeah. I, I mean, I follow MMA, but and enough to know that news. We'll know if we're watching yeah, the UFC and if much. the fighters like if you've been fighting for years and years and years, and then you randomly get jacked. Okay, there's something like uh, <laughs> I mean, imagine it like if it was like Pride. So a yeah. lot of people, oh, are, I loved Pride. Though. New MMA amazing. fighters, <laughs> yeah. See, in wake of split with over McGregor. Uh, so uh, a lot of people who are current MMA fans, I don't know if they know what Pride was. Pride was a, a an organization in Japan. Does it not and, exist anymore? No. Oh, oh wait, did they buy it's, it and change it? I didn't. Uh, I, I thought it was still. Question. Uh, I know there's other organizations. But did you like know? It. Did you know this? That I watched an interview with uh, Rampage Jackson, and they probably uh, helped him get him. Well, no. So Rampage <laughs> says when he went to the when he went to Pride, they got their contract. He said the first line on the agreement said, "We do not test for steroids." Oh wow! That was it. Just that's all it said. We do yeah, not test for steroids. That we don't test. Yeah. Those guys were 
crazy well, looking. He, they look he, like amateur bodybuilders fighting each other. So, okay, what does it say? Pride was eventually folded into the UFC. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. So that. they don't call. They don't have so it. They just. Uh, I guess uh, all the absorbed them. Yeah. Huh. Remember Alexander? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Overeem. What was his first? Name? Alistar. Yeah, Alistar Overeem. Bro, he fought in kickboxing for so long. He was like a tall, stringy looking dude. Dude, he was. And so little by jacked. little, he was just getting jacked. Yeah. Fighting as an MMA. He guy. looked like a monster I once know. he made it to the UFC. You know what else was crazy like that was, uh, and I think they eventually kind of, kind of cracked out is uh, WWF or back before it was WWE. Oh yeah. Uh, I remember reading uh, can't correct Bret right. Hart's uh, biography, and he went into like, I mean, it, they had like a built in pharmacy in the. Like, of course, the dude. Like, you go see your doctor, and you'd be like, oh, my knee hurts, and this and that. And so they would just yeah. prescribe everything. Wow. And you would like, they, he tells stories of like grocery cart shopping for like wow. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was wow. like, you just go in and get everything you want, man. It's so crazy. Uh, that's Speaking of, uh, well, this is not. In that category. These are peptides. These are legal. <laughs> hey, can I tell you Ooh. guys? So I've been using the the, the sub-Q BPC-157 for a while. Yeah, you love that. And then I added uh, thymus and beta to that, hmm. which holy so i did i'm messaging back and forth with the with the people over. oh this is the tb 500 or something tb 500 is a synthetic version of thymus and beta but this Uh, is thymus and beta this is the real stuff it's a little more expensive but i think it's better but anyway same identical chemical structure right uh it is making me look gnarly like gnarly looking in the way that my my muscles look like the hardness so i'm going back and forth you saw me messaging jay because i'm like is this this has some we- strange anabolic. I know it's for healing. It's for regeneration and healing, but I'm getting a very strange, like aesthetic, muscular. Effect do you think that it. could be, especially since the amount of volume and how consistent you are with your training? Do you think maybe it has to do with your recovery and you're just leaning out because you're building more muscle and so recovering better? I, so I looked in some forums and I was reading about this in forums because combining the two is is like a really popular combination for. Um, Injury healing and just for healing the joints, and in the for, in forums, uh, people are reporting the same thing like unexpected muscle gain and fat loss, and like, well, my, my, I'm getting real, my muscles seem really hard, and this is what I'm noticing as well. So what thymusin does? So okay, BPC speeds up the the rebuilding and regeneration of soft tissues, so leg, ligaments, tendons, and cartilage. Thymusin works on actin, which is part mm. of muscle fiber. So muscle injuries, it would heal fast, whereas BPC would heal like tendon and ligament tendon injuries. And ligaments, yeah. So it could be that. It could be that it's really making the actin um, regenerate faster and heal faster, and that's what's causing yeah. the growth. I don't know, but it's, I am, it look, I'm like visual, I could visually see a, a really hardening, Interesting effect. I'm I'm going back and forth with the people with our partners at mphormones.com because I'm like, okay, I'm very sensitive to things in my body. I'm pretty lean, so I can see what's going on. And I said, this feels very strange. Like I did not expect that. So effect. I don't know if you saw the message from Katrina this morning, but she s- says we're getting a bunch of emails. I want to hear your opinion on what you would do in this situation because of the potential of what could happen in that market. Oh, yeah. Um, if people should stock up on their peptides. Hmm. That's a good question. Um, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I don't think you're going to advise other people to do some of that. I'm asking you, what would you do? In what this would situation? I do? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, well, now that I, oh, God, I'll, uh, okay. That's tough because uh, I know the yeah, market. Like the shelf life. Too, yeah, right? I, know, I know that, well, you get you you can you don't reconstitute them so you can get yeah, them separate and then reconstitute them later so yeah. that'll give them a longer shelf a really long shelf life. The gray market is the research chemical side. I don't like that though because literally the, the anybody could do that and you don't know what's in there. We talked to Doctor Seeds. He says if the peptides off by I know, but I'm I'm thinking more from the perspective. Okay, say you're somebody who's already uh, getting these peptides right yeah. now from MP hormones, and they end up cracking yeah. down and saying like, no more. They try to make some bullshit. Uh, you Especially know. if you're receiving all the benefits from it, and you're just like, oh man. I mean, I would. So that's why I'm asking. Me. I would. I mean, that's what yeah. I would do. I would. I, I if there's something would. that I really probably, like, but I mean, I'm stocked up on BPC 157 for that. Just, like literally just to have yeah. in just to case. Have. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was like, you know what? I well, Same. Part of mine wasn't had anything to do with this. Was before all that. I just like I'd rather have it on hand and for the times I need it than have to wait because yeah. sometimes it's a process to get it. And I'm like, if I have an injury or I feel that way, I want to be able to take it right away. I don't want to wait. Yeah. You know, weeks. I knew the 
that's what happened with the FDA, man. Yeah. I swear the so the, the it's, FDA. Well, this is it just, kind of ine- inevitable. It just it, it mirrors the medical marijuana industry so much yeah. to me. It reminds me of that. I mean, it's the plus and minus of being early adopters like we are. And that was the same thing for me when I was in the cannabis space. It's like when nobody, when everybody's all skeptical and afraid of it, that's the best time to go into a business because you get to you get to ride the early wave. Now the downfall of being an early adopter with all that stuff is you're going to get all the bullshit up back and forth with you know people res- need to understand that a lot of regulate not all of them but a lot of regulations exist to protect special interests, yeah. large corporations. <laughs> Most of the time, bro. A, a, a lot Most of, of the look time. Look, cannabis was made, speaking of marijuana, everybody knows this now, so I'll bring this up because it's, nobody can argue this. It was made a Schedule One drug federally, meaning most illegal, mm-hmm. most illegal, biggest potential for abuse, most dangerous. The reason why it was put there, and we all know this very well now, was because they were trying to find a way to throw the countercultural protesters in jail. Yeah. And they couldn't throw them in jail for protesting because that would require changing the Constitution. <laughs> so they took their favorite drug, and made it Schedule One, and then kept it that way so that they could get these dumb hippies who are protesting yeah. the you know. The Even though Vietnam there's like War. no way you can overdose, like, I know. Like really, like, it's safe there, enough that we now we don't even know that? what the we don't know what the LD50 is <laughs> for. Know, like, it, That's how no, non-talk. I mean, you're not going to have a good time. It's not going to be great for you, but no, yeah, you ain't going to die. Not going to die. No. So they did that. Even p- people need to look this up. In 1974, I want to say the government did a study on cannabis, trying to connect it to lung cancer because they needed to c- continue the propaganda. Yeah, they couldn't even put that out because it ended up, they found that it like actually- They saw an anti-cancer effect, shut <laughs> yes, the study down. Yes, They shut the study down. Uh, so with peptides, peptides, you can't patent them uh, because of how they are. You could change them just a little. It's, it'd be impossible to try and patent them. It's very difficult. Compound pharmacies can make them. They have real applications, real potential benefits. People are going off medications because they're taking peptides. They can become very inexpensive uh, as a result. And this is a major threat to the pharmaceutical industry. Yep. So the FDA will step in and to protect their friends in big pharma will eliminate their competition. That's it. Hands or down. or there's always like a like in the cannabis space, there was this you know, these backdoor deals that you know, like what we would see is all of a sudden uh, zoning would change. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where it's just like, and they would like target, you know, competitors. And then you, the ones where the zoning was okay, it just so yeah. happened to be the people that were friends with the people that oh. were making the decisions on where How the zoning convenient. was going to be. It's like, I, there's so much of that shit going on on the back. Like, I, and I don't know enough about the peptide space. Like, I'm not, I, I was in the cannabis space. Oh, they'll space, attack so the pharmacies. I, They're going to yeah. let them compound is what they'll do. They'll go after the compounding uh, ability somehow because the peptides themselves are going to be really hard which is just like what they do with the dispensaries it's yeah. like they weren't going to go by that time the cat was at the bag marijuana was doing so much good so they We've just already, made it illegal to bank with them yeah so they made it exactly it was like okay you guys could sell this stuff but then you can't put it in a bank well how the fuck do i pay my taxes well, well, now, how do i exactly do now we're going to get you on that yes mm-hmm. is what they did so yeah i know no, it's, it's, it totally reminds it's me of racket. that it's it, so so some now the positive thing for the consumer is eventually this leads to uh a, eventually it leads to everybody getting involved in it. The price is coming down and being more accessible. So yeah. eventually it will yeah. get there. The process on the way there though is always shady. It's so frustrating. Yeah. It's so frustrating. So anyway, speaking of like cool cutting edge stuff, that study I brought up on a few episodes ago on red light therapy and blood glu- glucose levels mm-hmm. is flying. This oh. was a big deal. This was, Okay, so this was the study where they took red light therapy for 15 minutes, they shined it on the upper trapezius muscles of uh, subjects. It doesn't matter where you shine it, but they just use that area. Lowered blood glucose. So they did nothing else, just red light therapy. Now, red light stimulates the mitochondria. So the mitochondria uptake and utilize glucose more. This is what ended up happening. And they dropped their blood gl- glucose numbers by 28%. Literally doing nothing. Yeah. Just sitting down. So lots, it's circulating. People are going crazy because there's very few things you could do that'll do that to you besides exercise. Like you could exercise or walk or move after eating and you'll see really, really nice, significant changes. Mm -hmm. This is just you sitting there. So I could see people at desk jobs after lunch. Like the the red light room. That's it. Just after lunch, shine it on yourself after you eat lunch. You're less likely to get a crash, uh, a spike in crash of blood sugar. You're less likely to get uh, insulin um, insensitivity. Yeah, scheduled issues. breaks so people could like uh, get some kind of exposure. Probably less likely to store body fat. What would that, that do? In like, okay, so my sister, right, who works for us, 
she her thing is that she puts it up by her computer now she yeah. does and it just kind of Perfect. kind of blasts her you know what she also has now is she has the the treadmill desk oh so uh, imagine her doing up. lunch going to lunch and then doing that and then do it and then walking on the treadmill while hitting the red yeah. light probably one of the best situations right there mm -hmm. yeah oh wow yeah. I'll have to, she, I'm, well, obviously yeah, she'll hear on, this she's on to something for yeah sure, but so. i mean talk about uh remarkable so people are just uh they're, they're commenting out talk about it it's like uh I, again there's nothing you could do besides pharmaceutical that would lower your blood blood glucose like that by yeah, 28 percent. that is crazy now That's a lot of these studies you, remarkable you find because you're into all this stuff and you're always reading uh, like yeah. science daily and shit like that but are does juve post yeah these? oh they do yeah if you go on their website they have all the latest studies mm -hmm. on um on red light therapy and what it does and what it doesn't do uh by the way just for you know i know we work with juve but one of the reasons why we work with them is the red light that's used in studies very rarely is the same red light, like wavelength and intensity that is used by people that sell products. It's not all the same. Just because it's red does not mean it's the same red light. Juve uses what they use in studies. Yeah. So it's a legit. I one. wonder how much the, uh, I mean, it's not black market, but what would you call that? Like when it's like a like it's the knockoff. Yeah, yeah. The Fugazi version. <laughs> like the Fugazi, What's the Fugazi yeah. market yeah. of red light? The like I wonder, how, market. I wonder how big it is I, because there, it's been getting, it's getting more and more popular. And I think, it, I mean, you even see it like when I, I see it in movies and shows now, yeah. like you see like people using all these different red light. Well, I have a buddy that had a, uh, so I, he was like, Hey Sal, I was listening to your show. I want to look into the red light thing. I'm like, Oh, here's the link. You know, we have a discount code, whatever. He's my friend. Yeah. Idiot though. Yeah. He's like, so oh, I found this one for, oh on God, Amazon. So for <laughs> annoying, dude. You don't think I did my homework? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, this is exactly what I told him. I said, bro, this is my space. Yeah. If yeah. you ask me about fitness and health, trust me. Just like if I ask you about your stupid space, <laughs> I'm going to trust you. But anyway, what does he do? He, go, he goes online. He found it on Amazon. Bro, he went online, ordered a red light hat. So he was doing it for hair loss. <laughs> he goes, bro, I found this one. It's, he's like, the one you were to showing me was like three times as expensive. This one was like, it was, I don't remember, it was like 50 bucks. It's a hat you put on with red light. <laughs> oh, God, bro. I said, I said, it's I said, burn my skin. I, yeah. So I pulled up the study. I said, does it have this wavelength, the red light? And he goes and looks it up. He's like, no. Like, oh, fucking throw your red light hat away, dude. <laughs> yeah. You just yeah, look save like that idiot. for Christmas. Yeah. You yeah. Just walk around with red light. Well, I, you know, the unfortunate part about that, I I believe that's probably why some people feel like it's a gimmick yeah. because mm -hmm. there probably are people that go buy something, they hear red light and they get, they get advertised that this is like the same thing. And then they try it and they're like, this is bullshit. I would do it every day yeah. for do you months. Get, and do you guys get it? Do you guys have friends and family members like that who will oh, like totally. start a new workout or Too diet many, after uh, asking you what to do? It's the worst. Oh, it happens to me all the time where they ask advice like that and then I see they're doing something else. I'm like, why did you do that? Well, you told me this. I'm like, no, I told you this. And then yeah. you went and decided to just do whatever you thought was a good idea. I have a, I have, Don't ask me then. I have a family member. I'm not going to call Brutal. them out because they'll get mad because I've already done it before. But they'll, 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 they'll post. I'm on a thread with a bunch of friends and stuff. And they'll post like, oh, uh, back on my workout. This, oh, here's my diet. I'm cutting these things out. And I see it every time, bro. I'm like, do you know how many times I've given you workouts? How many times I've, I've talked to him about diet? I'm like, you're, it's, here's what's going to happen. So the last time, I didn't say anything this time because I'm over it. But the last time I said, here's what's going to happen. You're going to lose 15 pounds. Three months later, you're going to gain it back. Oh, fuck you. You're not supportive. That's what you did the last five times. <laughs> Do you want to bet money on this? <laughs> yeah, I'll bet how much you want to bet. So we bet money. Sure enough, went back. I didn't take the money. Because <laughs> he's already like, just listen to me, dude. Just listen, bro. You think I, I'm, you know, no, my favorite, do my favorite lie when people say like, like no, 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 I, I know what you say, but I'm, I'm going to do this first. And then yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. that's, I'm that's like the, the most common one. It's like, I know. Yeah, yeah, I know what you say. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to, I'm definitely going to do that. But first I'm going to do this. So, so <laughs> but also I need to do cardio on top of that. Yeah. So my dad, uh, so my dad obviously uh, is an expert with, uh, especially with stonework, right? He's been doing this since he was nine years old. He went to go work on a friend's house and was doing their kitchen. And the friend was like, I'll help you. So I can, you know, I'll pay you a little less. But if I help you, my dad's like, that's fine. You can help me out. Right. No problem. So the whole time, this guy's telling my dad, you don't need to do that. No, no, no. Just do it this way. Look, I saw it on YouTube. And my dad is like, <laughs> he's getting so like, oh I can, like yeah, dude. Hell so, no. He does it because he does, he does yeah, a very yeah, good yeah, job. Yeah, he's, he's been doing it his whole life. Come on. And he's, he's like, a craftsman. No, he's like, no, no. If you do that, here's what's going to happen. You're going to water damage. This is going to break, whatever. Anyway, he ended up leaving halfway through because the guy kept telling him, no, no, I'm doing it. No, listen, just do I saw this on YouTube. This guy corners. knows what you're talking about. My dad's like, do it yourself. I'm out of here. Dude, the guy called him back. I'm sorry. Come back and oh, do the job. So yeah. annoying. That is. Yeah, it's so frustrating. Hey, speaking of annoying oh. things, dude, you want to talk about uh, stress? You guys, okay, I moved 
because we had mold in the old right, place. Right, had right. to get out, right? Move into this new split, new place. Then you find out anything that has pores, you got to get rid of it, so you throw out all your Fucking shit. Fucking mold travels with you, dude. How? Yeah, I know you told us that. How yeah. much had, but did, did you, you have to throw away? So we got we're getting new mattresses. Get rid of. Yeah. Okay, new mattresses. All, like, so how many is that? That's like four or five. A lot of mattresses. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, you got a lot of kids. So yeah. I just, yeah. Hell, mattresses. Bro, you should at least. We got to wash you should, all you the clothes. Hey, you should at least have me go try and work a mattress deal with someone first. I swear. That's <laughs> fuck, man. That's a lot of money in mattresses. Oh, yeah, my bro. God, bro. Yeah. Uh, uh, the kids' toys, out. All their poorest what? toys, gone. Yeah. Hey, did you already, if you didn't already, already you, we do have a relationship with uh, um, Sleep 8 or 8 yeah. Sleep. I always do backwards, yeah. right? Yeah. They have they have mattresses too, oh. just so you know. Dang. So before you do that, I mean, I know today's not a commercial for them or anything like that, but since you're bringing up mattresses Oops. and I and before you go and- Let me see if I can return them. Just oh, you <laughs> already did it? You already bought them? We bought some. Right? Oh, oh, God. I know. What, what were you thinking, it? guy? I would have came it? with a big vat of uh, bleach. It, bleach won't do it. Throw you, it on you have to use specific no? uh, white vinegar, uh, and then there's a spray that you can use if you don't want to get rid of certain things. You spray it. It's got thymol in there, which is like a plant oil. Hmm. But now your house. So like wouldn't that. it be a, a smart thing to uh, per, so you don't that just doesn't ha potentially happen again to like do like a, a wrap around the mattress, like some sort of a, a plastic wrap that goes all over. Like brand new mattress comes. Like why wouldn't you just have like a real thin piece of plastic all the way around it and then put all your stuff on? I mm. mean, you could, but if it's brand new, it should be fine. But here, but I know, but just, like just if, it, if, it came, if it came from the house and then it infiltrates it, it wouldn't get through the plastic. Oh, you well, now saying? you're really encouraging mold growth, though, underneath that. But better, this shit better be sealed. Is excellent. Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. because mold grows where there's moisture, lack of oxygen, lack of sunlight, dark, cool spaces. So you wrap something in plastic, that shit better be sealed. Otherwise, you're encouraging. Mm. Yeah, because I, because I, I don't know. Yeah. So we're just getting rid of everything. Fun. Oh, oh, and my poor wife, she's like, because then you can contaminate shit. So it's like, what do I do? I got to wash this. But then if I put it over here, it's going to touch this thing. And she's like, I'm like, I don't know if it's like Ebola. Maybe we're okay if we just like, like wash things. Your house looks like Dexter. Oh, this is, this so is all part of Jessica's master plan to get all new stuff. That's yeah, what it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's really what it is. <laughs> That's really what it is. Uh, it's like, uh, eh, I wanted some new shit anyways. Let's just uh, let's freak Sal out. He's, he's, maybe I'll add to that. Oh, the weights. We got to throw the weights away, baby. Oh, <laughs> man. I thought of you. I saw this video and I was dying. And it was like, okay, so you know how uh, so people like me will will give like an Italian accent and it's kind of like, yeah. you know, you add the bibbidi bibbidis to it. Yeah. Well, now imagine, <laughs> imagine an Italian guy. Like trying to give like a uh, English American accent, but in gibberish. Oh, he had okay. So there's this this. Oh, like, so he's pretending to speak. There's English? a song that literally is like uh, a hit song that this oh, guy from about. Italy, yeah, yeah, I know you're talking about from Italy yeah. made. That's an old song. I've never heard it before, yeah. but he's it. The whole thing is gibberish. It yeah. sounds like it's like real words. In that's like, a classic. I'm, I'm like, what, what in the is, hell? What are you talking about? Oh, you talking? Uh, I'm Doug, so mad now. If you uh, put it, he's going to put it up. I gave on. him the link to it hold earlier. On. That's a famous song. I, yeah. I'm, you know what? I'm going to get so much flack for not remembering this guy's name. He has some of the most popular classic uh, songs. Yeah. Of all Adriano Celentano. Celentano. Yeah. Adriano is, he like, is he like the Italian version of like Weird Al? No. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> don't ever say that about John <laughs> He's a national treasure. I don't know what do you mean? Asking. I like Weird Al. He's no, like, he's great. So he's seeing, what's the song called? It's called, oh boy, I can't even pronounce it. Put Prison it up. colon. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. No, put it up no there, you right. have to hear this to, so you know what I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah, I'm so about. lost right now. Yeah. Okay, let me, let me, let me put on. it up. We'll play. It's a famous yeah, song yeah. in Italy, and then there's a part where he pretends to be speaking English, but he doesn't know English. So he's it was just done saying. in the 1970s. 1970s. So yeah. I grew up listening to Celentano. Okay. Yeah, all my dad had all of his eight tracks and all that shit. Yeah, I was like, oh, he's nerd. he's literally a national treasure. It's catchy for sure. He's like Bruce Springsteen. So, okay, what I was going to say, what is the parallel to us? Oh, he's like Bruce Springsteen or like. Oh, Wow. Yeah, in Italy. He's like... So he's really good. He's very... And then this is like his... And now, is he doing it like as a mockery and kind of... Or just tongue-in-cheek or what is it? That's a good question. Yeah, I, don't I don't know. know if they knew in the 70s what was going... Like if he was just doing it. I don't know. He just started just like, you know, the, gibberish. And then it just became like, oh, this is I catchy. This? Yeah, we're going to put it up now. None of that's English, though. Yeah. yeah. Not even one of the words. Oh, that's great. What's the name of that song, Doug? I'll, I'll tell you what it is. It's, it's, it's like 25 letters long. <laughs> it's like, 
<laughs> like, what the hell is he talking about? That's great. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> we we literally <laughs> grew up. We, yeah, right. I'll, I'll look him up. It's, it's, oh, it's the name up here. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's right here. It's like. It's a long. I forgot how to say it's that. It's pre It's like super yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Basically, yeah. It's Steel Soul. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. One of his. Uh, he's. Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. It's bringing back so many, so many memories. My dad literally had every one of these freaking albums. Oh, really? Yeah, dude. He still does. We still listen to it that's half the great. time. Yeah, that's a great. Yeah, and people, I saw people commenting on that. Like, why we go through all that trouble and not write actual words? But mm -hmm. it's because he didn't know any English. Yeah, he, he still, to this day, he'll still get on Italian TV and he'll perform and people just love the guy. Well, it's funny because even when they write words, like in, uh, there's been a bunch of these 70s songs where they just like, they get in the studio and they're like super high and then they, it comes out different and it is like gibberish, but it's like, oh, that's the one we keep. You know, it's just, I don't know. I think it's sometimes you get in flow and it's like, this actually makes sense. It sounds good. With the, it sounds good with the beat. It's yeah. actually a great song. Yeah. I can, yeah. you could tell, yeah. I can tell like, oh, okay, that's, it's got a good beat to it. I, for, it took me a minute to realize, oh, he's not saying anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like, I, it obviously, like, for huh? my ears, I think he's saying another language, but I'm like, oh yeah. no, he's trying to like sound like he's saying English words but there none of those are English yeah, no, words not, no that's funny yeah. I mean I that's feel like, people I feel hear like, us. I feel like yeah. I feel like Americans <laughs> exactly. do that shit all the time too exactly, but I, just, I just thought of that I was like yeah, is he like, is it, it, in yeah, former like me doing Snow that. in former like, well he's actually like, did he really have an accent in, uh, what's his name Snow did he is he really no, from he, Jamaica he, dude that's gotta be fake yeah it's fake yeah, isn't it's it it's fake no I think he was from Jamaica he was saying real words but he was doing it all fast you know yeah but it was it was a real accent I feel like that's the that's like the white guy version of doing that the, like Jamaican music, bro. I totally feel like that. When, I, um, when Americans yeah. make fun of other languages and make up words, oh, it's racist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even okay. going to try. Yeah. I'm not even going to pretend. That's true. Was, we'll just get yeah. canceled. Yeah. Right oh, out the gate. Yeah. Hey, speaking of canceled, what, what's up with Logan and Paul in that line. fight, huh? Oh, Did you I, watch it? I'm so... I watched... I I normally watch these, and it was a weird time because I think it was in London. A lot something. of bad press. Like, apparently, it was just a joke. Oh, they fought? It was. I, it was, even know. I saw the highlights afterwards. Dylan, D Dylan Down, whatever his name is, uh, like he was just not Dylan taking Danis. it serious, acting like an idiot, pretended to, like, tried to guillotine team at one point, got disqualified, lost. I mean, it was... But up it, until then, he was getting his ass kicked, apparently. The whole time. But it, it went to decision, too, though. So such a... Like, I feel so sorry for... The, you know what? This will be interesting, right? So I'm glad you brought it up because I this we have this ongoing conversation on this show about how we speculated like the future yeah. of boxing yeah. and stuff. This is an example of what will kill it, I feel like, for a lot of these uh, people that are paying for these fights because if they string enough of these types of fights in a, in a row like this and people will stop paying that yep. pay-per-view yep. money. Because it was it was such a joke. It was so stupid. There was no. It wasn't a real good competition. It was all built around the drama. Leading up. It was very Jerry Springer. And I think that the, you have to ask yourself how many people will continue to pay that kind of money. I mean, Jerry Springer is on television for free every day, so that's a different story. Yeah, like would people actively keep paying five ninety nine a month or whatever to catch? No, that? the reason I don't know. why it was getting so popular yeah. is because the the circus, but then the fights were actually legit. If it keeps going like this, um, I I think it's I don't yeah, think I don't know though, right? Because there are I mean, again, Jerry Springer is, is the you know example what, I'm going to use is very popular, but it's also on cable TV, so it's free. Yeah, isn't that the risk though of mm. of hyping so hard? You know what I mean? It's like the dude that's like, I'm so good in bed. Oh baby, I'm gonna. Uh, and then they get in bed. It's like you know, two minutes later, you know, it's like is that, that would have been okay. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. happened to you with a lot of guys. Yeah, no? I was gonna say. Is that <laughs> happened to you with a lot of guys? <laughs> It's exactly how I was going. Well, he's like, he's like, you know, it's like when guys so tell you they're really good right, guys? and they totally let you down. <laughs> I'm a, I'm an underseller. You know what I mean? So many guys, dude. Yeah. Always pull that move. So many, guys. Guys. so many guys let me down. So many yeah. guys. Let me down. <laughs> yeah, gross. Yeah, like, come on. You said that's enough. You said the table. Bring the thunder. Way, way that's enough. Good. Way too good. I mean, I saw it on Andrews, yeah. Doug's face, and Justice. Uh, everyone had the same thought. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I gotta give you always a, letting us down. Give you anyway. those got to undersell it. You got to over deliver, uh, man. Uh, yeah. uh, but I, so, I, so I, I wonder if uh, it'll keep going. I mean, again, the, the with the whole Jerry Springer thing, I don't know. Maybe would people actually? Do you think people would pay uh, like a monthly fee or a big fee to actually watch Jerry Springer? Or do you think because it's well, on, Jerry Springer's all fair now. Nobody watches that anymore, right? Oh, bro, reruns still on that thing. Yeah, they still people still watch that, that show. That show was so crazy, bro. Dude. That it, show was so. Crazy. And you it and was, people watch. Did you see the one with the? <laughs> 
I don't know how, what you're supposed to say now. Little person, I guess. The little person stripper. There was a clip of a little person stripper who banged this girl. This like this. He was like sleeping with this guy's wife, and he comes out, and it was like they were just like gonna fight each other. And the 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 stripper guy had like black leather like harness on and shit. I'm like, what? Who made this? Is this wow. real? Who invented this? Yeah, <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, like how much of it was like people? They just. I don't like, are these real people like every time or is it like, did they find certain people that like have a certain role they play? It, I mean, it's actually a it hack. <clears throat> I think Adam brought this up. If you feel bad about yourself, you watch Jerry Springer. Yeah. yeah. All of it's, a sudden your life yeah. seems pretty like yeah, well yeah. put together. Yeah. Well, yeah. speaking of that, like, so I, <laughs> I was, uh, Everett brought to my attention that there was actually a coloring book that he was looking at getting. And like, I just lost it. There, there's a coloring book literally for people of Walmart. <laughs> for people of Walmart, what you know, have you ever seen? Okay, have you ever seen, I've seen the, the website? Book. The people. No, there's of a Walmart. famous book. There's a famous book called The People of Walmart, and it's a whole book. Yeah, so I so there's actually like a coloring book that uh, oh <laughs> like these people like are they on like rascals? Yeah, well, it's just all the wild outfits and the the wild body oh types and the whole yeah. nine yards. And so I was like. It's artistic and creative. Like, let's go. So I bought him that. And then- Where uh, do you even find something like that? It, Amazon. Dude, oh, they have Amazon. like buy ridiculous Amazon. things. I saw then, the worst thing once at a Walmart. I just remember, I just, I think I blocked it out because I just remembered it. There was a really, really heavy set woman. Yeah. And she was wearing a, just a shirt. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was a big shirt. It was yeah. just a shirt. But it, because it's a shirt, it was kind of short. And her belly was like exposed underneath it. So yeah. it was covering everything. So it was like, you would see her walking and then the belly, the bottom belly part was coming out of the shirt. Wow. And there was nothing else. Yeah. This is horrible. it right here, I Justin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's got like the, the American flag overalls and the cat t-shirt. and That's great. Dude. That's yeah, fun. It's fantastic. I'll, buy, I'll totally yeah, it's, call it that. We're, we're making a project out of that. <laughs> so are, uh, these are bad long. humans. Dude, uh, <laughs> hey. I know. It's like. Oh, it's been around since 2016. Wow. Yeah. Uh, hey, you know what's on Netflix funny. now? Huh? Mm. Dune. Have you seen Dune? The original? Yeah, no. Well, I mean, the. the, the yeah. yeah, of course. God damn. I started yeah. watching that again yesterday. That's one of the few movies I've watched now. I bought uh, that on, on. That's a long movie to watch multiple times. I've seen it uh, so three good. times and I'm going to watch it again. It's, it's one of my favorite movies. It's, it's so, so well. Like the. the just the design of it, the way they present the culture of the future in, in, in contrast to the technology yeah, and all that. Like they did. I hope the second one hits so just, I do. just the same because, yeah, you never know. But I was they did a really good job. Oh, it's that. such a great movie. It dude. was good. I think that's one of the few things that I think we were all on the same page with. I think when it comes to movies, a lot of times we're off. But did you guys ever watch the, ori the original movie, Dune? I did. A uh, yeah, long time ago, was, though. It fell flat. Yeah, yeah that was tough. It was, have you guys seen it was the, so long. Have you guys ever seen the actual book, Dune? Yeah, yeah. I have tried reading the whole thing. Yeah. It's like it's like two Bibles. Like, yeah, it's I so, think I got through like three quarters and I was like, I'm just done. I mean, isn't that the idea of all these? These are like following the story, right? I yeah. mean, it's mm -hmm. obviously that the first one left out a ton of what's inside that book, mm -hmm. so... It'd be interesting to see how it does. Yeah, it is. So, it comes oh, soon though, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, I think this year. I think so. Maybe that main actor keeps getting himself into weird shit though. I don't know what his name is. Oh, really? Yeah, like uh, what's his name? I can't remember. <clears throat> he, he keeps be like headlines and stuff about him. Go ahead, Doug. Yeah, March fifteenth, twenty twenty four. Oh, good. Yep, okay. it's coming out soon. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam, I want to ask you about the feedback on the flavor that you invented for people to have <laughs> it. <laughs> it. I am going to take the credit for it. Uh, actually, I was just talking to Mike this morning. It is uh, is becoming everybody's favorite flavor. Wow. So we, I, we were getting that already on our end, um, but he's saying that that's the feedback he's getting on his end too. So it's flying. I'm just going to flying. I'm just going to so point good. a few things out. So this is Creatures of Habit. People don't know. High protein oatmeal. Adam came up with the idea for the flavor, which is now becoming the top, the top flavor. selling yeah. flavor. So it's amazing. Uh, so I'm just going to put a few things out there. Sometimes there's signs in the universe that say that something should happen. Hmm. And we've now worked with companies that we work with, with ideas <laughs> oh, for here. supplements and products. <laughs> so far, they've all been a home run. <laughs> all I'm saying is we uh, should start a supplement company of some nah, sort. Yeah. You guys <laughs> should give me... Let me try. Uh, yeah, Let me put yeah, some yeah. shit together. Oh, no, my God. Oh, come on. Just, we don't need you any more distracted right now. You're I good. think the fans want it, right? You guys no, want me to no, no, make some crazy no, don't shit? don't get them involved. No. I will put something This is together. the perfect situation, right? We've now built such good relationships with partners. They're allowing us to make these decisions. Yeah. To me, without any of the stress and headaches. 
That guy is trying. That guy's trying to build and sell a company. You know how stressful his life sounds. Yeah. It sounds so stressful. Yeah. Like all we have to do is it's amazing. Here's an idea. Yeah. yeah. And, and then it crushes. Deal with it. It yeah. could be yeah. us. Yeah. No. You don't want me to make something? No. Scary? What do you care? You don't even care about any more money. Huh? You, know, you don't care about No, I just want to make yeah. I just want to make supplements. <laughs> just, I mean, we get the credit for it. I mean, our names those, all like, our name nets. is all yeah. over it. And, yeah. you know, so I think that I mean your name was on the the uh, peak power yeah. and now this and then the and then what? We're gonna work on something with Ned, yeah. right? So we're gonna do something. I mean, to me, that's as cool is to have all these partners that we love and do business with. And they are yeah. com- I, coming I to us to formulate stuff. So. Like, uh, I don't want to be the situation? guy. I don't want to be the guy that came up with the algorithm for Google, and then you know, just the engineer. You know, I mean, Google takes the algorithm. I'm keeping my most. Wow. My, I'm keeping my best ideas myself. Yes, everybody. we do. We all. We've all agreed. Stuff. We want to be that really? guy. We want to be the. You know, the, no, the engineer don't make no money. He the, got paid uh, the, his uh, salary. He signed it over to Google. Oh, you think? Oh, I think the guy who wrote the algorithm for Google. Well, I don't know. I, I mean, got a lot. Of, <laughs> I made mean, that one up. <laughs> that might be the guy who invented. Google. Yeah, I don't know. yeah, I'm pretty sure he's doing all right. Yeah, I, I don't, don't know, know who did that. Actually, I'm sure it's probably the two guys, right? But that's, you know that that's how it happens with a lot of these companies is they have people researchers, yeah. and they will discover things, but they automatically when they work there sign it away. So it's yeah. saying like, if I come up with a huge discovery, it's and I get why, right? Otherwise, the person wouldn't have the R and D and ability ability to do it. But that's what happens. You're like Steve Wozniak, and you're not Jobs. You know, oh, you're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't even you don't think you want. You, I think you don't even realize you don't want that. You don't. You like being anonymous. You don't, you already don't like the any sort of attention that you get as it is. So any more attention, you don't want to be the guy. No, you don't want to be the guy. Who no, would, but I want to start a supplement company. Nobody knows. You know what I mean? That's going to be real successful. Well, how, huh? Yeah. How does that feel? I want to make a for-profit business that nobody knows uh, about. I'll, t- hey, uh, I'll yeah. talk I'll talk about it like this. We're like, guys, this is weird supplements. It's going to be black market soon. Yeah. It's crazy, though. They put ingredients in there that I mean, banned it, in other countries. I mean, it would be would be fun is to do something eventually at one point salami as a, like, subs. a completely side project. <laughs> what you call it? Just <laughs> sal- salami subs? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Oh yeah, you're right. you're like, Would you yeah. like salami in a capsule? <laughs> hey, I got, uh, I got. Goes down good with me. I, I got to bring something up that is so illuminating to me. You guys are probably going to think like, whatever, we already know this. That's fine. But I, there's a page on Instagram called, maybe this will be our shout out, but the, this, this page is called, I, I wrote it down, H A D H doers. So A D H D and then. Ewers, right? So okay. <laughs> it's a page for research uh, and behaviors with people who have, about people with ADHD. So I found this page. Because your wife studies it. Because she's been studying it, trying to figure me out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, boy, you know, uh, it's a very illuminating, a little saddening, but also <laughs> illuminating. Like I, I didn't, so there was one, there's a doctor on there. So I'm going to try and get these people on the show. In fact, cause it's pretty, pretty uh, interesting. So this guy talked about it. It was this, this doctor, and he says, "Yeah, you'll meet people with ADHD, and you'll and they'll say, I don't have memory problems. I remember more things than anybody else. I could tell you it was on the page of this book that I read, and I read this thing.' And he goes, AD, people with ADHD don't have issues with memory. They have issues with short-term working memory, meaning you'll tell them something, they'll go in the other room, forgot what was happening, and then get d- distracted doing something else. I'm like, oh shit, that's totally Squirrel. yeah, that's, totally that's me. A, that's 100 yeah. percent time. Uh, that's the page right there." Really interesting stuff. Time blindness. Did you guys know that this was a thing? Time yeah, blindness? Yeah, I, I refuse to believe that's a thing. Well, look, I have created a lot what is of- it? Str- uh, it's an excuse to be late. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. First off, I'm, let's first, be real. First off, I'm not late to appointments. Of course you would try to justify that <laughs> no, no, no. bullshit. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not late to appointments. That's not the thing. <laughs> but here's, I'm with you, bro. Yeah. But here's <laughs> where, here's where for me, it comes becomes fucked up. Me calculating how much time something's going to take is very difficult for me. So I'll be like, oh, I can do that in like 15 minutes or I can do that in whatever. Very difficult. Or I'll go do, perform a task saying I'll be back in 30 minutes when actually it's going to be like two hours. But they were talking about some of the stuff and how the brain works and it's really, really very fascinating. There was also a talk on, because uh, uh, a significant percentage of entrepreneurs have ADHD. And there was this woman that interviewed, yeah, that. That interviewed people with ADHD and found what made them the six, these successful people so successful. And the reason why they were successful is they leaned on their strengths and learned how to outsource their weaknesses. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's why I go. think that's the single greatest piece of advice that was ever given to me. I've totally. told you guys that because I don't even know if I'm, like I've never cared to decide if I was diagnosed with this or officially have this or not, but no. I definitely have found that 
not worrying about the things I'm not so good at because I can't seem to focus on those things is just a smart strategy. And then going all in on the things that I'm already good at because yeah. uh, if I'm good at it, I tend to really focus strongly on it. And I think this well, is a successful way to And at that point, it, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's something you need to solve except for the fact that you need to just harness it and realize what you're good at with that. Like you hyper-focus and so you can be productive and, and you know, do well. Uh, I, it's just like it becomes a, a syndrome that they can add Here, medication Here's towards. another weird one. This one is so weird. You guys know when I walk in, when I'm doing things, I'll just be loud for no reason. I'll, for no reason, I'll just yell something or I'll say something or I'll make a song or whatever, right? And I just, I've done this my whole life. Apparently, this is a way that uh, people with ADHD stimulate dopamine for themselves because it helps them pay attention. I didn't realize that's what You're I was ramping doing. it up just naturally. Yeah, dude. And I'm yourself. reading, I'm reading this uh, thing and listening. I'm like, holy uh, shit, all these weird things that uh, uh, people make fun of me over. That's why I do those. Things. Now, what is your, uh. what's your take on the fact that like, what, 50, 60 years ago, like none of this like existed. And then now it's like this, this widely accepted thing that we and diagnose all these kids. And my take, with my take is if you use it as an excuse, just like the beginning of the episode we would talk about, right? If you use it as an, you can use anything as an excuse. And when you do that, now you're at a disadvantage. Yeah. The, the, here's the benefit, understanding yourself, right? because then you can help design and create structures mm -hmm. and create a lifestyle. You can optimize it. Correct. Yeah. To work with, now I've already done a lot of this shit <clears throat> without realizing it. Yeah. yeah. Like, like there's a lot of weird things that I do that now I'm like, that's why I do those things. But that's what you need to do is understand yourself. Oh, that's what happened. Okay, well, then w now that I know that this is a, a, a much more challenging for me, obviously I know this, but now I know why. Let me design my life around it in this particular way. For example, organization. Terrible, terrible. I, I can be so disorganized. Well, knowing this and knowing that this isn't just me not trying, it's just actually a challenge. Like hiring an assistant or somebody who organizes for you is very valuable, worth your money. Whereas the average person will look at you and be like, what a waste of money. Why are you hiring someone to do your schedule? Right. Do and it you're yourself. splitting your money up. Yeah. Totally. totally. I thought you were bringing this because there was a page that I saw. It was like D ADHD or something because oh, really? it was all these dads that like oh, were like Ugh. yeah no. <laughs> but it's a, it's, it's a good page a it's a good page uh if you have kids or a partner or you want to learn about yourself or whatever really interesting stuff very cool sweet there's a lot of cbd products out there here's a the problem you don't feel any of them well that's because either they don't use cbd there's no regulations or they don't use full spectrum hemp oil with all of its terpenes and other cannabinoids that make the cbd more effective well there's a company called ned that uses full spectrum hemp oil. You take this, you feel it. It's not like other CBD products. This one you actually feel for real. Check them out. Go to helloned.com. That's H E L L O N E D.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump and get 15% off. All right, back to the show. First caller is Tyler from Iowa. Tyler, what's happening? How can we help you? What All up? right. What's up, man? Hey, guys. Thanks. Thanks for uh, taking my question. It's, uh, it's fun to be on with you. Right on. Yeah, thank you. So, all right. A little bit of background. So, I'm uh, I'm 52 years old, six uh, two, roughly about 210 pounds. Uh, battled my weight my entire life. Kind of a classic uh, on off light switch dieter. Had uh, you know several events of relatively extreme weight loss uh, that always would land me back where I started, or even worse. Uh, my latest fitness journey started about four years ago. I started uh, working out with my son, who was then a, a high school senior. Uh, he's also the one who who turned me on to you guys, uh, and he's he's a uh, also a recent NCI grad. So, uh, nice. shout out to my son Solomon, uh, who's yeah been a huge part of my my uh, success in my fitness journey. So my uh, yeah originally I intended to lose about ten pounds. And uh, yeah, just once I got on track with a healthy diet and weight training, uh, I ended up losing about 50 pounds uh, in, in that first year. And again, that was, that was about four years ago. And so over the last four years, I've been spending four to six days a week in the gym, just you know, weight training, walking, uh, spending time in the sauna. And clearly, you know, at this at this stage, weight training was the game changer. I, I uh, have, yeah, it's it's uh, I genuinely have, have a, uh, adopted a lifestyle that I know is going to remain with me uh, indefinitely. And just fell in love with the process of weight training. Love being in the gym. Got focused on the process and not the outcome. And so the yeah, weight training is just yeah has uh, transformed my body and and truly changed my life. 
Um, so recently, yeah, started MAPS Anabolic at the recommendation of my son. And before that was sort of doing my own thing with uh, traditional splits with, you know, doing uh, push, pull, upper, lower, uh, full body stuff. But I've really enjoyed the MAPS programming uh, and yeah, being on uh, MAPS uh, Anabolic and just really excited to see where that takes me. So that's, again, just a li- little bit of background on me and uh, which will, will take me to my question. So uh, through the course of that, like everybody else, I uh, have been you know tra- tracking some of the key metrics um, just, yeah, body fat, weight, uh, all the, you know, sort of all the standards and, um, going back, you know, even three years ago have just not seen, not seen a lot of dramatic changes in those numbers. I've been fluctuating around that 210, been fluctuating in the 14, 15% body fat. And looking back again, uh, you know, that gets, gets a little bit frustrating. And so my, I guess my question at my age and stage in my fitness journey, should, how should I think about gains? Should, uh, you know, should I be just okay with knowing that it's going to take this kind of work to maintain where I'm at or should I expect more? Yeah, Good that's question. a great question. Mm-hmm. So uh, first, let me answer that last part. Should I, and I'll rephrase it a little bit. Um, should I be okay with the, the process and whatever the result of that <laughs> process is? so long as I do the, ro- the process in a healthy way? And the answer is yes. That is the answer to long-term success uh, with fitness. Now, the rest of your question is in regards to your age and how that's going to impact uh, your, your progress and how, you know, what you can expect uh, at this point. You're, you're, you're 6'2", 210 pounds, sitting at about 15% body fat, right? Very, very good place, by the way. Yeah, like you're, you got a lot of lean body mass. You're very fit. Um, and 15% is an inc- is a great body fat percentage to maintain. Now, the challenge with getting leaner uh, is right around 15, 14%. I'm speaking generally. Some people, it might be a little leaner, some people a little higher, but right around that number, if you want to get any leaner, you really have to start to be very detailed uh, with diet, like super consistent. Um, to 15% is typically right around where a person will sit when they're doing everything right and they're healthy. Getting down to like 12, 11, 10, yeah. now you're getting to measuring. Be obsessive and, a bit. Yeah, you got to be meticulous every day, weekends included. <laughs> and if that's what you want, um, and, and I think it's fun to go for it, I don't necessarily think it's a great place to maintain. People who tend to maintain that kind of lean body fat percentage tend to have a challenging relationship with diet and exercise, myself included anyway, in the opposite, right? So- I tend to struggle with uh, letting off a little bit and not being a little body obsessed. Um, but if you want to get a little leaner, you, then you got to start to get really detailed with tracking. And, you know, you start with the tracking for two weeks, find your maintenance, get your macros down, hit those targets day in and day out. And then you'll start to see that number change. As far as building muscle is concerned, um, that's more of a slow, consistent process um, with your strength training. I do want to ask you this over the last three years, have you seen changes in performance? Forget the physical, like what you see in the mirror and weight. Are you seeing yourself stronger, more mobile, more stable? Yeah. And so that was something I should have added. Uh, it, not really. So when I, when I, and I'm not super diligent about tracking, you know, all of my, you know, all my volume, but of course I know, you know, what sort of my standards are. I know what dumbbells I'm going to grab when I'm doing, you know, depending on what types of curls I'm doing or my bench press, you know, I know all those stats and it honestly, again, over, over the last three years, not a lot of change in that. I, you know, lots of, I feel like I, there's a lot of physical changes again, uh, thrilled with where I'm at, probably in the best, oh, for sure in the best shape of my life, certainly for my age. And so I am satisfied with that, but sorry, that's a long answer to your question, but not really, I, not a lot of progress with my volume. I, ha- I have a theory on what might, might also be going on here too. So a lot of times when I have a client that has uh, dropped as significant a weight as you have, uh, they're really hesitant to go back into like a bulk because they they have finally shedded all this weight and they haven't really put effort towards a legitimate bulk because in fear of putting on that body fat. And even if they do kind of go to a bulk, they do it for a little bit and they go, oh God, I'm putting on weight. I don't want to go. And they go back the other direction. Right. Is, is this something that you've experienced? Have you actually ran a consistent bulk and seen if we could build some, some and put some size and weight on? 
Yeah, no, my son's going to love that you said that because yeah. he's been telling me that for yeah. at least a year. Uh, he's been encouraging me to try it. And yes, I am, uh, again, as somebody who's I, literally my entire life battling my weight, uh, the idea of doing that is, is uh, it's Scary. unnerving. Yeah. And, uh, this yeah. is, this is, this is the, the yeah. progress. hundred percent, Ty. This is so normal. And I had a feeling when you first, like, because you laid everything out really nice for us. And I'm like, I bet... He hasn't gone on like a serious yeah. bulk in, in a long time. And by the way, that is just enough to kind of keep you. And here's and this is a perfect thing where I have this conversation with clients where I go, OK, you're healthy, you're fit, you're strong. We're in a place where and if you if you like the way you're eating, we can stay here kind of forever. But if you want the next level, then what we need to do is we need to go into a bulk for a while and actually build some muscle and support all this work you're doing so you can get extra calories to build more muscle and you'll see the strength gains go up and then mm. we'll come back down the other direction. And I, I think, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll come off pretty easy. You're going to see that, but it's the psychological part of getting past like, Oh shit. Like I went up three, four pounds and, and thinking that it's body fat because that's the struggle that somebody who was carrying that extra weight on that worked their ass off to get where you're at now. But it's, if you want to go to the next level of body fat percentage and strength, it's necessary that yeah, we do and you're going to want to track with that too, uh, because, um, of your fear of gaining body fat tracking is going to help because it's going to give you parameters and you're going to hit specific numbers, a reverse diet, which I'm sure your son is, uh, very equipped to individualize for you much better than we can, because we only have a little bit of time here on the podcast. But a reverse diet is exactly uh, would be the exact prescription that I'd want you to do um, in pursuit of building strength. And what'll happen is your weight will go up a little bit. It'll probably be just lean body mass. And mm -hmm. as a side effect, you'll get leaner because you're probably not going to gain body fat if you do the reverse diet the right way, especially because you've been doing this for a little while now uh, pretty consistently. But you'll see the strength gains go up. Your metabolism will kick in. It'll feel great, um, and then you can you can cut you can cut down from there. You know the other part of this that's important, Tyler, is uh, because you know we're talking a lot about, especially in the beginning of the question, like how to do this forever and enjoy the process. There's a learning process here that um, is is uh, it's it's basically being shown to you right now or revealing itself to you, and the learning process is to become comfortable with eating more food. So that's going to be very helpful for you long term because this is always going to be something that is going to be in the back of your mind or maybe be challenging uh, for you as you continue down this process. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So, you know, I assume then and tracking is something that I've struggled with and something that I know that I need to start doing. But as I start in that bulking phase, is are there anything, sort of any benchmarks, things to look for to say, Hey, you're not actually gaining lean body mass. You're, you know, you're just, you know, you're just overdoing it. You're over consuming. I mean, is that, uh, or am I, am I over, overthinking that you're, piece you're, as well? You're overthinking it a little bit. Um, I think that someone like you, the thing that I know that I'd be most concerned about, and I know what will happen because I've done this enough times with someone in your exact position is you're going to, you're going to increase calories a little bit. And you're going to see the scale bump a little bit. I mean, it's just you're eating more calories, you're eating more carbohydrates, which means your sodium goes up a little bit, which means your, your body's going to retain a little bit of water. It's completely part of the process. And then you go the other direction, right? So like you start adding calories and you go, oh shit, I put, yeah. I, I, I put too much weight on too fast. And then you go back the other direction and then it's like we're in the same spot again. So the big thing I would want you to do if you were my client is like, okay, we're going to focus on protein first. We got to track that and make sure we hit that. That's the bare minimum. Like, let's make sure we hit our every single day, 210 grams of protein, and let's be consistent with that. And then if, as long as you're eating whole foods, I really would just encourage you to try and, and add a meal in there or add a portion size. So let's say you are, a, you know, you eat six ounces of meat every meal and let's say a cup of rice, I might just bump you an extra half a cup of rice in two of your meals, or I might just bump two or three of your meals, the ounces of meat from six to eight ounces or from eight ounces to 10 ounces. Yep. It doesn't have to be a lot. You really don't need to like radically change or go on this crazy aggressive bulk. It's like, if you know what you kind of eat, 
like your portion size, literally bump the, the meat a couple ounces or bump the carbohydrates, especially good sources like rice or uh, quinoa or potatoes, sweet potato yeah. or potatoes. Just bump the ounces by a couple ounces and you it, that's enough to feed an actual bulk. And then the goal should be to slowly be able to increase that. It sounds like already... You've got a pretty smart kid, mm -hmm. yeah, and it sounds like he. I and mean, the fact that I it, would have him do the reverse. Diet, I would. Right? He. I, I think it, between if you track and do a good job of tracking protein, and then like filling you out either hand it over, a yeah. My Fitness Pal or a Fat Secret, and then he has a very uh, good non biased view of what you're doing because you are going to have to get out of your own head while you do this and kind of trust him to kind of guide you through this. I think he's going to do you right. I, I I have a lot of faith in him, and, and just just a little bit of time we've talked about him. Yeah, it sounds to me too. Like I mean, the more we can move towards focusing on the performance gains and and strength gains, and in your sort of mentality going into these workouts of like I'm just want to see like incremental growth there, and just focus all my like attention, just like you're focusing on your intention on being lean for so long. Like this needs to be a massive shift just in your thought process with that. So now, too, a lot of that just kind of happens naturally. But, you know, initially, of course, like tracking just to make you see that there is going to be progression with it is important, but really to to relieve yourself of that stress of the scale and, and, you know, how things are going. If your progress is moving forward with your performance in the gym, things are moving the right direction. I, yeah, I'll echo that right now. That's the best way to get your to get out of your head is to focus on the strength in the gym. If you're doing a, a, a good whole food based uh, calorie surplus. If you're working with your son and you're tracking, I wouldn't weigh myself at all. If I were you, I would just look at the weights on the bar and be like, okay, I added 10 pounds to my squat. Whoa, there's another 15 pounds on my deadlift. You're moving in the right direction. <clears throat> then, you know, like we're moving in the right direction. We're doing everything right. And you could do this for a little while. And then when you get to the point where like, wow, I feel good. I'm eating a lot of food. I'm getting really strong. I feel great. I think it's time to, to cut. Then you can go and, and go for a cut. It'd be a lot easier to get lean from that point for sure. Mm -hmm. Is, is there a certain program that once, so like, again, I'm doing anabolic. That's the first one I've run. Uh, is there one that I should go to and then to go back for the sake of trying to lean back out? No, they're all, they're all. You I can, like you there right now. Yeah, I like anabolic. They're all, you can, any strength training program is going to be good for either one. The key is, the key would be that you're doing something novel, which it sounds like you are because you just started MAPS anabolic. So I would stay in MAPS anabolic. Uh, follow a reverse diet and after probably after the program is over, see how you feel and then maybe go on a little cut. And always give yourself, like if, if you and your son do like your body fat or check some of these things occasionally, make sure you give yourself a, a good amount of time. I never would judge myself on my diet and my training in a like a two week short period of like, oh, this isn't working out. Like Make sure you give yourself a solid month of trusting the process, sticking to the diet, sticking to the training the way, and then you can look at the like month movement and go like, all right, am I moving in the right direction? And if so long as you're moving in the right direction, yeah. stay the course. If you're not, because sometimes this happens, you overcorrect. Maybe you know you somehow you, you eat 700, 800 more calories a day than you you should, and you put on say two percent body fat. Then you go, oh, okay, I didn't need to put that many calories. I can scale back a little bit on the calories. But just avoid uh, tracking and measuring the body fat stuff too too close together and overcorrecting left or right. This is going to be a lot of this. And I think the fact that you have a, 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 a son who is, as I can tell, knows what he's doing, I would kind of trust him to be m the one who kind of says, Dad, you're doing good, or I think we should go this other way because you're going to get in your own fucking way. For sure, when you've when you when you you've come from where you've came, you'll probably get in your own way. And so just kind of relinquish that a little bit to him and, and trust the process. I think you're going to be just fine. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So quick on anabolic then. So I'm in, I'm in phase three and I've had some interruptions uh, in my weekly routine. So okay to restart anabolic. I've heard you say that to others. Like it's okay to, we don't have to move from program to program. It's okay to cycle. I mean, would I start back over in one again? Yeah. And I, then, so oh, I, I don't know. You finished. You're almost done with maps and You know why I, I, I like, you, just you know why I like him I doing am. that though? Hmm. You know why I like him doing that? With a, Is, with a calorie surplus? Yes. Because mm -hmm. I like you doing that. And it, because you just came through it. So when you go back and start over again, you're going to remember, oh, I was squatting this much or right. I was deadlifting okay. this much. And hopefully if we're in a good surplus back to Justin's point, 
you see a performance in game on some you'll of these. You'll see things. that phase yeah. one. That'll yeah, be good. and phase yeah. one is where you'll really start start to notice it. So I like you running it again. Okay, so quick question on anabolic: How important are the trigger sessions? For, for whatever reason, I struggle getting them done. Make, I'm great make, when I'm in the gym. Yeah. Very disciplined, but yeah, the off days, it's hard for me to just stop what I'm doing and, and hit a trigger session. They'll add, they'll add a secret a, sauce, man. Yeah, They'll add a good three to 5%. So not insignificant. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Just make sure you don't do them super intense. The goal is just to get a little bit of a pump. 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah, That's it. It doesn't have to be a lot. That's it. Okay. All right. All right. Awesome. Thanks for calling in. Hey, Tyler, follow back yeah, up with us. Thank too. you guys. I would love to hear, hear how you, you and your boy are doing in about two, three months. So I'd love for an email back. Let us know how things are going. Right on. I'll do it. All, All right, right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. In. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know, it made me think like killing it. Yeah. You know, I had a feeling though, right out the gates because of his, oh, he called that. Yeah. Super. Yeah. You hit that right in the nail on the head, man. Uh, it's interesting. It's like, you know, if, if like we lived in a world without scales and mirrors, uh, that required us to have to climb and move and, and have strength, people would look better. Yeah. We, everybody would look a lot better. The uh, irony, the irony, right? right? Yeah. yeah. And, and, the, and just realizing the reason why we value the way people look when they look a particular way is because it's the- because of the work. It's actually the, it's the, the effect of the fact that the person can move or it's a sign that the person can move well. Mm -hmm. It's not the thing that we're actually desiring. Yeah, it's they're the, doing what their body needs and wants. Yeah. So, you know, him not weighing himself, just focusing on strength is going to be key to this whole process. Yeah. This is a really hard place to come from, right? When you've, when you've, totally, because he, he said he struggled with weight for, sounds like most of his life. Bro, I, this is the opposite for me when it yeah. was cutting. That's right. opposite. That, yeah. I mean, he looks I great. So it's like he doesn't want to lose that. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I know, of course, you bump your calories and go into a bulk, you, you, the, the biggest amount of weight gain happens right away. So it's really a mind fuck. Yep. You know, you 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 increase these calories. Yeah, five carbohydrates. pounds, easy. Yeah, all of a sudden, three to five pounds comes on the scale, and you were like, oh, my God, all I did was yeah, eat panic. a few more ounces of this or one yeah. more meal, and, and, like, and you think in your head, like, oh, that's fat. And it's like, no, it's not. Like, you're... Like, and that's why I liked another number that it gets, you know, kind of bashed. But again, I used to love to use this for clients. It's like 3,500 calories equals a pound of fat. If I just bumped you a 500 calories and we had a week, it's not even possible that you put body fat on. Like we had to have built yeah. some muscle, like a lot of that's water. So just keep that in mind that that's all you got to eat a lot of extra calories yeah. to put on in a week's time, a pound or two pounds of, of body fat. And I think you end up thinking that that weight that it, on the scale, or even the way you look, because you know, you, well, the, the way you look is you play tricks on yourself. Yeah, especially if you know you weigh uh, it two pounds heavier. So yeah. much. Yeah. yeah, and you look in the mirror, you're like, oh my god, you know. It's, yes, yes. It's, it's all, it's all. Big so, sounds like his boy, though. You know, I love well, it. He's yeah, an NCI yeah, grad. Yeah, he, yeah. he knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Our next caller is Kimberly from Iowa. Hi, Kimberly. How can we help you? Hey, how are you guys today? We're good. good. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. Good, good. Hey, I just want to start off with saying thanks so much for, you know, just cutting through the mainstream jargon and really promoting uh, and teaching what real health and wellness should look like. Thank you. It's, Thank it's you. really awesome to Thank hear you. from you guys. You are doing an awesome job out there. And uh, I personally just, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. calling in. So how can we yeah. help you? So, uh, you know, I wanted to say that, uh, I, I bought some of you guys' programs uh, last year, wanted to really get my body in its best shape for being 50 years old. And so I'm there. And uh, so last year I bought the bikini body kind of aesthetic program, worked through that really hard, did 11 weeks of that. And I felt really good, felt great about my body. Um, had used the focus and fortify part of that on um, the off days for my lower half, lower body which is always kind of been a, an area for me that I want to work harder at. So um, aesthetically, I just thought, you know, I had had some people saying, oh, you know, you, you're looking great, you know. And like I said, I, I'm a fitness trainer and have been doing it for 16 years or better. So I know what, you know, how to exercise. But I just really wanted that extra, you know, just really going a little harder. So bodybuilding was an area where I thought about aesthetically being able to get my body there. Uh, and some people that I know have done it, uh, a girl half my age recently has a, a coach who she suggested I could use. And I guess that's just where I'm 
kind of not sure because I've been listening to you guys the past couple of years pretty closely. And most recently, you guys say a lot of uh, bodybuilding coaches suck. <laughs> and, uh, you know, bodybuilding is really hard on the body. And so I guess, you know, I thought, okay, the alternative may be some powerlifting, but I really don't know how that's going to make my body feel or look. So I'd really like to hear more about that and what you guys think may be a good uh, alternative for me, somebody who, uh, you know, I value health, I value fitness. Uh, it's just my lower half of my body, my upper body, I always feel like does really good and I get lots of compliments. Nobody doesn't compliment my body. That's not what I'm saying. But I personally want to really work uh, between the, where the hamstrings and the glutes meet. That's where I have the biggest problem. and. So I was just kind of thinking about, you know, these these bodybuilding or powerlifting types of programs and how that might really put me there. All right, good question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all strength training. The uh the uh, they're all going to build muscle. The one that's going to work most effectively for you is going to be typically the one that's most novel. Now, powerlifting the sport and bodybuilding the sport are very different. But for someone like yourself who's been doing this for a long time, you love fitness. You love training your body. If you've never done powerlifting style training uh, or programming, you'll probably get really good muscle sculpting, you know, effects from it. Probably better than bodybuilding style programs. If bodybuilding style programming is what you tend to always uh, do. Now, the the I see in your question, you you have some questions about your SI joint and how it's going to make you feel. The challenge with powerlifting style training, because it's it's so focused on strength and performance, is always going to be mobility. It's always going to be, uh, you know, is my body stable enough? Do I have, uh, you know, is it bolstered enough to push weight in certain lifts? I don't know the answer to that. So if you notice mobility issues with yourself, you say you have SI joint type problems, I think working more towards mobility might be more beneficial unless that's your MO right now to begin with. So I get the better question would be, what do you do now? What does your training typically look like now? I just want to add something to what you're saying, Sal, because I 100% agree with the direction you're going. If you are limited to what you can squat and deadlift because you're asking, this exactly. is okay. Well, this is also probably what's hindering your progress in that specific area. So you it been, could be. I mean that I that sacroiliac issue that I have, and it's probably from beating myself up all these years, guys. You know, I've been in group fitness for twenty years. Uh, been that I've learned a lot through listening to you guys, though, about the symmetry and about slowing down and form and just you know all of that. So, but my doctor, my Cairo, he, he's what I do. I don't do a lot of mainstream doctors, but anyway. They said, he said 90 pounds would be tops. And right now he's suggested maybe not doing it because I'm a little inflamed at the moment because deadlifts and, and squats inflame that joint back there. And uh, so I've been a little concerned about what I can do when it comes to powerlifting then. Yeah, I would avoid, in that case, well, I would avoid powerlifting training. And yeah. here's the deal. You said something that I want to, um, I want to address. You said it's probably because I've been beating my, you know, training so hard or beating my body up. You've been training, you haven't addressed the right things. You've just been training wrong for a long time. Joint pain is not the natural state of the body because you work out. Joint pain, if you work out, is a result of strength weakness imbalances, and weakness stability. and stability issues. So uh, we do have a, a program or two that I think would benefit you. Symmetry would be where I'd go. Map symmetry would be excellent. Um, uh, and you know, prime or prime pro uh, yeah. for its correctional exercise. I think those two things would help uh, quite a bit. Uh, you probably lack some type of lateral stability, maybe always working in the sagittal plane. There may be some yeah. core stability Ankle issues. Hip mobility would yeah. be a big focus for me. But, but this, is, this is solvable. I want to make that clear too. Yeah. This is solvable. This isn't like you have this and you're just going to be riddled with uh, low back pain for the rest of your life. And then you, you should just squat. That's why I don't think bodybuilding or powerlifting should be our focus right now. Our focus should be let's let's uh, let's Eliminate solve pain. this. Yeah, let's solve that's this. That's a big roadblock that's in your way. That's right. Because once we solve yeah. that, and then we can start to load the bar, and you can start to squat and deadlift. Because it's not squatting and deadlifting. That, that's yeah. a hip hinge movement. That's a that's a movement your body should be able to do pain free. And the fact that you're limited 
to 90 pounds or less because it inflames you so much means we have a, a root cause we need to address so we can progress not only strength wise, but progress your physique the way you want. You right. want to right. build that lower half and sculpt it. You've basically, you've probably already tapped out all the possibilities of doing that without actually loading the bar. And we've got to get to the place where we can load the bar. And so we got to fix whatever this issue right, like is. how restrictive is your depth like even just gaining a few inches of depth is going to give you a whole new exercise potential and like different uh, muscle gain that you're not seeing you know in your legs and so just the restriction there and 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 trying to work through a lot of the barriers that the pain is kind of uh, signaling uh to to be able to kind of bring back some stability there in your hips and also like, uh, you know, your lower half is going to open up a whole new world of potential. It, for I see that you do uh, hot bar and yoga consistently. I do. Yeah. I don't think flexibility is your issue. If you've been doing that for a while, no. you, you got, I can get past 90 degrees in the squat. It doesn't hurt during the squatting or the deadlifting. It's the day or two later yeah. is when my joint starts, my low back hurts there, a little bit. Sometimes I push through, you no, know, no, this is yeah. a strength stability issue. Strength. Yeah, it's a strength stability issue. So um, you, there's 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 something lacking in your ability to stabilize when uh, performing under load. We have to address that. Otherwise, it's never going to go away. No matter what you do, it's always going to be there. Um, and you're going to eventually be limited on the exercises you can perform. You don't want to not be able to squat with some load. Yeah. That's going to cause issues later on in life anyway. So we got to figure out why your SI joint keeps hurting you when you do a fundamental human movement yeah what's the, what's kimberly what's your chiropractor doing is he just adjusting you or is he actually giving you like moves movements and exercises to do to correct this he has given me some moves and exercise i actually ask you know for those so yes he's given me some but a lot of it is just a some light adjustments um or he'll tell me you need to lay off the squatting like right now since i'm a little inflamed yeah. lay off the squats altogether which I love squats, you know, and, and so I'm, I'm doing like band work and some of the other stuff that were, was in the bikini and I got the maps 15 too, which kind of helps. So I, I was adding in those, uh, because I just don't want to go a full hour all the time either. So I like that. Um, yeah, I was just, I, I just really didn't know where I should go with this so that I could get that body where I wanted it. And I'm not realizing that SI is, you guys now are saying that's yeah. the biggest problem. Well, yeah, this oh, is, a, this is getting your way. Have 100%. you done any isometrics? Have you messed around with that at all? No, I haven't a whole lot. Probably just in group fitness, I've done isometrics. You guys, I have the, I do priming. Mm -hmm. I did uh, buy the anabolic too. And I, like I said, I do priming, but maybe I don't do enough. You, yeah. you just haven't, you haven't addressed the issue. Do you know, do you have a, an idea of where the instability is coming from? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I have a little note here. Just what's going on is that ili my ilium is tipped forward on my right side and it causes a little nerve interference. And so then my, my, I have a rotated low sacrum, sacrum too on the right side. Okay. So it's always the right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's like uh, saying, that's like saying my SI joints inflamed and I got an MRI on it. So uh, it's not telling us why. Mm -hmm. Why is that happening? It's probably a uh, dysfunction between the communication if you're with your psoas, your QL, maybe your core. It could be all the way down to your ankles. Could though. be all the way down to her foot. Yeah. So, so maps symmetry right. is the program I'd want you to follow. I want you to start okay. every exercise with your stronger, more stable side. Copy the reps and the weight with the weak. With, sorry, with your weaker side. Copy the weight and reps you do with the weaker side with the stronger side. Even if you feel like you can do more, li be limited by the weaker side. This is not a compromise, by the way. You're going to see body pro progress by addressing this the right way as well. So it's not like you're putting all your progress on hold. You're going to see some progress by addressing this as well. So it's not a either or. It's actually both. So map symmetry would be the program uh, to do for you. I also, so uh, if, we, if you don't have that, Doug, we'll send that over to you. I also would like to get you in the private forum if you're not in the private forum already. Are you in the forum? No, I don't believe so. Okay. And I would love to do that. I, okay. I yeah. also, because I'm very interested in some reverse dieting, Adam, that you've mentioned. Okay. I think you had a family member, your wife's family, that you said each of us kind of keep fat in certain areas. And I feel like that's my my low spot maybe this is obviously an issue too 
but I wonder about some of that as well because I seem to keep the fat right there in the unfortunate saddlebag area they call women's form. <laughs> well, uh, you know, so let, let's get you in the forum. I want to get you in the forum. I really want to address this pain. I think when we address this, we're going to unlock a lot of things for you. We also have Dr. Brink who is in there who is our go-to doctor when it comes to a movement specialist. And I would love for you to actually video yourself performing uh, like a barefoot squat. You don't need to load the load it, just literally barefoot squat as deep as you can. Show us, you know, a front side view of that and tag us and uh, Dr. Justin Brink. And I'd like to take a look at how you're moving in a squat and maybe we can, maybe something will be a little enlightening for some of us right. uh, to give you even better eyes. But I'm telling you right now, I need to see you move. Yeah. It's, this, this is the limiting factor for you seeing the gains you want to see and the change in your lower body. Like it hundred percent is you've maxed out what you can get down in your lower body through, uh, through working around this issue for so long. We need it now. If you want more, you want to you want to build more muscle. You want to tighten the butt up, the saddle, all the things you're talking about. Then we gotta we gotta address the the thing that's limiting you right now. So let's okay. let's fix that, and then we'll go from there. Thank you. You got it. No, so I just didn't. I didn't realize that was going to be the topic. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought I could go so into some nice. bodybuilding, but yeah, obviously yeah. none of that's going to work if I'm not feeling good. Yeah, you know the irony of this, Kimberly. You've been training people for a while. I bet you, if you had a client who came to you with the exact same stuff. You would have given them the answer that we gave you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. want them to get healed. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, that's, yeah. that's the bane of being a trainer. <laughs> I, <laughs> so funny. It's, it's different when you're working with yourself, always. you know, yeah. compared to always to the root of it. Of course. Always different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kimberly. All right, Kimberly. We'll see you in the forum. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you in the forum. Okay. Take yeah, care, guys. We'll see I'll see you there. You got Thanks. it. Thanks. Ain't that the truth with trainers? Every time. Every time. Every single time. I know. Yeah. So much better with our clients. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, if you have pain that <sighs> is that not allowing you to perform uh, what you feel like you should be capable to perform with these kind of fundamental movements, you don't address the pain yeah. issue. If it's not an acute injury. You do whatever you want. You yeah. ain't going anywhere. That's, That's not going away. Yeah. Done. It's just going to exaggerate it and, and it's going to get louder. Uh, but yeah, I... I it's one of those things like we can throw ideas on and, and just spitball with it, but have to see her move and really see how that yeah. compensation happened. I, I, I would speculate though. She probably had a previous injury that didn't even realize, you know, affected all that. I, I'm the reason why I wanted her to do barefoot squat is I think I'm going to be able to see something from her foot all the yeah. way up. So that's what I think. I, think um, so too. I hope I don't offend her, but I also don't like the chiropractor. I also think that, I think that giving her the, the generic diagnosis that it's he gave her and to not, uh, be stressing specific movements and strengthening and the advice is don't squat or deadlift or avoid well avoid. who knows what the whole conversation was yeah i know yeah. but but yeah, at, I, know. I mean and then it sounds like they just may, mainly do adjustments um you know this is this is an area where i get and, and of course you're right, i don't have all the information but i don't know i'm willing to bet that we're going to get her in that form we're going to see the way she moves and between the three of us and or Dr. Brink, we're going to be able to give her things already to start to progress and improve her current situation. Yeah, the whole like your your sacrum is tilted this way and your ilium is this. And then, oh, look, here, here it's all straight now because I adjusted you. Yes. And they come back next week and it's back the same. That's exactly. Just the, come see me every week and I'll, exactly I'll straighten it out for you. Why get. does it keep happening though? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yes. How do I strengthen it so it actually supports itself? That's right. Our next caller, Zach from Illinois. Zach, what's happening? How can we help you? What up? What's up, man? Be here, man. Um, first of all, like everyone else does, I just wanted to thank you for not only this you guys share, but also kind of the mental health and uh, mindset side of things. You know, as a, young male growing up in today's age has truly been eye-opening. You really um, transformed my life in such a small amount of time. So sincere thank you for that. Love that, awesome. man. Right on. Thanks, man. Little background. Um, I'm currently a 24-year-old um, physical therapy student, former collegiate basketball player. Um, my measurables are six foot six, ranging from 205 to 210 pounds. And I've been lifting consistently for probably six or seven years. Um, during my playing days, I suffered multiple stress fractures due to overtraining and underfueling. Um, I would, um, even outside of practice times, do more lifts or do more cardio than I should be doing and then not eating enough. Obviously, it takes a lot of calories to build that back up. So 
had a couple of stress fractures. Um, but ever since hearing from you guys, my mindset has changed dramatically. So I'm happy I know about you guys now, but I'm wishing I knew about you then because I would have spent a lot less months in a walking boot and um, not suffered those. So my main question has to do with um, bulking and adding size as someone with a uh, taller and thinner frame like I do. You know, it's been hard for me, like the mental side of things too, to engage in a true bulk for, you know, months at a time. Um, I'll add like five or seven pounds and then I'll um, lose that within a few months. And it's kind of that same cycle over and over. So I've been falling in the same weight for probably five years now. So, and then I've also heard kind of adding to this, just the genetic side of things, you know, that maybe if you have smaller wrists, then it's kind of predisposed you to not having as much muscle or it kind of limits you from that. So overall, just you guys advice kind of going into this winter, trying to bulk up as a taller, thinner guy, and maybe that um, genetic piece as well. <clears throat> no, good, good question. Um, so you're in a different headspace now around you know, overtraining and all that stuff. hundred percent. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So here's a deal with, with genetics. Yes. At six, six, you're probably not going to compete in bodybuilding. Um, however, you were a division one basketball player. Basketball is, uh, there is a lot of explosive explosiveness in it. And basketball players at that level, even though they're tall, they typically have pretty good muscle building genes. You don't typically get to division one, unless you have uh, some pretty damn good uh, athletic genetics. So you've got the potential for sure, uh, but you're probably going to have to track and be very consistent with your bulk and not overtrain in the gym. I think a three-day-a-week full-body lifting routine with a nice five to 700 calorie above surplus bulk you, and watch your strength gains go up and watch yourself pack on some muscle. At 205.66 at your age, uh, knowing your history, I think you could gain probably 10 to 15 pounds of lean body mass within a relatively reasonable amount of time. And that's, that's, that's a decent amount of lean body mass. Easy. And I think you're also heading into for a tall, uh, also tall, skinny, lanky guy, not so skinny anymore, but I used to be that tall, lanky guy. This is the age where it gets easier for you. Like it starts right now. Like it'll get from 26, 27, 28, 30, like, your your lifestyle will probably be uh, less and less active as you're getting that. Not saying that you, because I still did a lot of things active, but not like it was when I was 22. When I was 22, I was playing basketball every single day, lifting every single day, wakeboarding, snowboarding, doing everything. I mean, it was like nonstop. So you'll see that will work to your advantage as you start to get to you know uh, later 20s and early 30s for packing, and that is advantageous for being able to pack on muscle normally one of the hardest thing to do, if you've got the training, you've listened to us long enough that you've figured out like, okay, I was probably over training before. Say you're following like a MAPS anabolic program. <laughs> you're set on that. Like that's a perfect program for someone like you to be following. The hardest part is uh, the diet part, which is, I mean, I was a notorious meal skipper. I was notorious for not being hungry in the, in the morning and wanting to eat like a big breakfast or I'd eat a big meal and then I want to eat for like six hours. And so, and then, or maybe I would for a week. And then if I just wasn't thinking about it or measuring and weighing it, I would naturally go back the other direction because I, I just wasn't a, a huge eater. And so probably the thing that is going to be one of the biggest hacks for you is figuring out the where, where, are, or what is your thing, right? Are you a, are you a breakfast skipper? Are you not a big lunch eater? Like, what is it about you? And then finding little hacks. I saw that I've shared on the podcast. I'm sure you've heard me talk about like a big hack for me was making a, a double or triple size dinner, carrying that over for breakfast in the morning. And then literally like cracking three or four eggs on top of that, like meat, potato scramble thing. And now I'm eating like a 900 calorie, 50 gram protein breakfast. Like that was clutch for me to put size on because otherwise I was easily the guy who could just eat some oatmeal or nothing. And then it's noon and I'm already trying to play catch up on calories. So, you know, how is, how is eating to bulk been for you and where do you struggle if you struggle anywhere? Yeah, do you have, do you track, do you have an idea what you eat on a regular basis? Yeah, I used to track more regularly. Um, right now I pretty much eat the same things every day, just like listening to you guys. And I'm not that you know, ground beef, rice and eggs and vegetables, um, chicken thighs, being pretty consistent with that. But I think maybe adding those snacks in is kind of where I get those three meals, but then it's hard to get, you know, 3,500 calories. Yeah. Kind of that's where 
Uh, when I've tracked these days, it's probably around 3,000, 3,500 calories of where I'm at right now. Um, so, you know, like four meals of doing that seems to be quite a bit, but it's something that I've better at. And I've even, the last few weeks, I've actually gained three or four pounds. So it's definitely improving for sure. I mean, that's yeah. it, bro. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, I mean, for big guys, like that's 3,000, 3, 3,500 calories <laughs> is low for us. Yeah. I mean, that's low. So, so if, I mean, when I was up to 240, I'm eating 5,000 calories. So just, obviously that's a big jump from where you're at now, but just imagine <clears> like <throat> the road to go that, to put on that kind of size is going to be through eating more food consistently and good choices, right? Yeah, eating your you, protein intake. If you know what you're eating every day and it's the same thing, you add an extra meal. Mm -hmm. Literally just add an extra meal. Uh, I would follow MAPS Anabolic and get strong and you'll see the gains. Now, now, now remind me again. So... Uh, in terms of like you're playing basketball, your activity <clears throat> levels, are you tracking steps? Like what, what does that look like for you now that you're not at that high uh, volume you were before? Obviously back then it was insane. Um, yeah. I, I think I burnt that out with basketball. I've got like, the grown man game with pickleball is my, my new thing. So <laughs> I play pickleball <laughs> right now. I'm um, just some running, okay. but in terms of anywhere from 10 to 20,000 steps a day, yeah. Living in Chicago. Okay. A lot of um, but yeah, I'm trying to I'm definitely trying to maintain at least ten thousand steps a day and be active at least every day. Mm -hmm. But like I would never take any days off and after listening to guys like at least one day a week doing more recovery mode, um, more mobility stuff. So that's changed the game too. Yeah, I think okay. do you have MAPS anabolic? Because I think that would be the program yeah, that for would you. be perfect. It's on my Black Friday list. Well, we got you. Well, we got, we got, got you covered. Early, dude. Yeah. Santa yeah. came yeah. early. Yeah, we'll, I, get, we'll give it to you. We'll give it Maps Anabolic. Follow that program. Add an extra meal. Uh, make sure you get good sleep, and you'll be good. I would. I would <clears> add <throat> an extra meal every day consistently. To Sal's point, and then I would also, when you have those days where you decide to play pickleball or do <clears> something <throat> that's kind of outside the normal extra activity, make sure you have like a high calorie yeah. sugar drink before or right Pump after. It up a bit, yeah. Think of it like you that is an extra thing, and so you need to eat a meal or a shake Just or to cover it to cover that. So that it because it, so you that's not pushing you back the other direction. So you know, that'll help. The last part of your question you asked about because you're going to be a physical therapist. If we had any advice, uh, yeah, just quick. <clears throat> I'm actually I didn't add this to like a personal trainer right now. I do some some online coaching and stuff, and kind of have that entrepreneurial mindset. And I was just curious. Obviously, you guys have built uh, a huge thing with what you guys have now. Just asking you guys for a physical therapist trying to enter the space and take on more of that entrepreneurial side of things would be great to hear. Well, I've, I've worked with some incredible physical therapists, like some really, really good ones. Great career to have compliment yeah. personal. I, I was just going to say the one Speed weakness, combo. the one weakness I saw with physical therapists was their, their, they didn't understand traditional strength training that well, unless they did it themselves, they were excellent at diagnosing and excellent at correctional exercise. Yeah, but when it came to, traditional progress progressive overload compound lifts squats deadlifts presses rows um you know the physical therapist i worked with they taught me correctional exercise i taught them traditional strength training now the fact that you're also a personal trainer you've got it so i would i would say um i would lean heavily if you stay in the personal trainer space I would lead heavily on your ability to, uh, on your knowledge on correctional exercise. That's going to make you, that'll, that'll put you head and shoulders above oh, yeah. all the other trainers. Massive it, demand there. If too. you go the physical therapy route, I would lean heavily on your knowledge of progressive overload and strength training where w instead of, you know, discharging your patient, okay, we're done. It's like, Hey, listen, I can also coach you from where you're at now to where you want to go. It's not physical therapy. At that point now, it's online coaching or personal training. I also offer those services because now that we've got your function back, you want to get stronger, you want to get more fit, I can do that for you as well. So those are the two the two avenues I would look. Do you already, Zach, do you already own Prime and Prime Pro? Is that on your, is that on your Black Friday list? It better be. No, but uh, it oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, okay. It better fucking be on your list there. That's, a, that's <laughs> okay. That is uh that is literally us bridging the gap between physical therapy and personal training. I mean, that that's one of the things I think uh, all of us are most proud of is because there is a huge need <clears throat> for what exactly Sal is saying, this ability to rehab somebody 
at, at the the DPT level? And then how do you take that same person and progress them to their fitness goals? Because a lot of times DPTs, they do all that work, they get them back healthy. And then it's like, okay, go figure it out on your own. And we really felt there hasn't been anybody that's really done a good job of bridging that gap. That program represents that. Uh, and so yeah. you, you'll get a lot of benefit. It'll make a lot of sense to someone like you and what you're going through. So very, very val valuable tool for you to have. But yeah, man, I, I think uh, what you're doing is the best thing you can do, which is experimenting with yourself, with diet and exercise and training and, and, and going through all of our programs and learning that way. Because what you're learning in school for DPT, that's only going to complement that business. That's going to, yep. yeah, yeah, you're in a good place, dude. I'm actually really excited to hear your journey. I think you're going to be a, a, a good trainer, dude. All right, guys, really appreciate it. And uh, I'm, I've been continuing to tell like our faculty and classmates about you guys. So hopefully continue to bridge that gap. So Thank I you. can't tell you guys. Awesome. Thanks, Appreciate Zach. It. Thanks, Thanks Zach. All right, guys. Take care. You got it. <clears throat> yeah, shout out to the the my the PT I learned the most from. Uh, her name was Lori Matroka. She was incredible. But the one area, and I was so honored when she asked me, she comes to me and she goes, can you teach me like traditional strength training? And I taught her deadlifts and overhead presses and bench presses and all that stuff. Uh, but the correctional exercise side was so – you bridge those two <clears> – <throat> your value goes through the roof, whether you're a trainer or a physical therapist, like mm -hmm. each space could use the other so much. It's, I, I can't express it enough. Yeah, so you don't just throw them out to the wolves. Like they have a plan that they can continue. That'd be perfect. It's yeah. crazy how closely related our fields are, yet how far apart it's so we are. so crazy. Yeah. You know, uh, you remember Melissa Wolf? Yeah. She was going, she's now a doctor, right? She went through her DPT, right? Yeah. And I remember talking to her through the process and she's like, you would, you'd be blown away at them by how foreign like traditional strength training That's what I'm is saying. to these they're and she's like they're brilliant like they're, they're as far as corrective exercise she goes yeah. but i'm blowing their I'm, she was telling me she was like blowing their mind with the stuff that we were doing for her bodybuilding oh, show she was like it was just like so foreign to them so it's so, but yet we're so close it's so wild so i think this as like having a like the only other thing I think could add to this type of a person is uh, the psychology. So yeah. like a therapist, oh god, therapist. Right well, now you're looking at you could, the yeah. perfect clinic. The, That's yeah, a superhero. The trifecta has to be like some sort of psychology therapy background with DPT type stuff and personal training. Are mm -hmm. you kidding me? Yeah, that, yeah, you if you and so you know to, I guess we didn't tell him this. He'll hear this now. I would be I would get into reading about uh behavioral psychology and therapy and, and around th dysfunctional eating. Yes, uh, like if, uh, it, it, substance abuse. You want to make yourself unstoppable in this field. Or yeah. connect with people who do those things very right, well. Right, right. Which is what I did. That's, yes. That's yeah. Connect with them, learn from them, or read in that direction. It will uh, I mean to me, those three things as a trainer, you you could tackle almost anything. Our next caller is Sarah from South Carolina. Hi Sarah. How can we help you? Hi guys. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, All thanks right. for calling. Awesome, awesome. Uh, look, I just really want to share with you guys, um, making the decision to to be strong instead of always chasing being skinny um, has been incredibly liberating. Um, and listening to your show and following your programs has been like integral in, in the development of that uh, mentality for me. So I just really appreciate you all. Awesome. Sorry, Thank I'm, you. Really, I'm more nervous than I thought I was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I just have two questions uh, in reference to preparing for a powerlift competition. So I am very much um, a beginner lifter and I've just been toying with the idea of um, enrolling in a competition. I found some um, local people and just wanted just wanted a big strength goal to to really um, strive for um, instead of chasing aesthetics. And um, I was pretty intimidated at first, but they've actually, um, since I submitted my question, they've uh, reached out to me, been super amazing, um, said, like, don't even wait, just get in there, don't worry about what you can lift. Um, just, it's, uh, they've been really awesome, really encouraging. So anyway, um, my, I just started phase three of anabolic. Um, I've always intended to follow up with uh, performance and aesthetic, um, but based on my change of heart and goals, um, I picked up power lift and split. And I was just wanting your thoughts on like what trajectory I should now take. Should I stay on track, um, run through performance, aesthetic, um, and then maybe focus on the lifting or get stuck into something like power lift now? I, um, we should we should add that in July twenty fourth is when the competition is. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's go backwards. So, okay. uh, power lift is, uh, is it three months or four months? Three. Long? It's only three. Is it a three month program? Yeah. Justin knows. Yeah. It's three months. It's three months. So I would go, uh, I would start power lift so yeah. that you can finish it 
uh, about a week or two before the competition. So basically, we just okay. need to, we need to get her to May. So yeah. I would I would follow the other programs. The other program leading, leading I, up to May. Yeah, I like performance and I like symmetry, just okay. to keep you balanced, so that when you get into power lift, because power lift is so focused on the three yeah. lifts, just to prevent injury, to keep you healthy, to keep you feeling good, and then power lift will take you right to the competition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great. So skip aesthetic. Yeah, it, I mean aesthetic's fine, but that's so bodybuilding focused. It's so high volume. Okay. I think there's value in it. But because you have this competition, yeah, uh, after the competition. yeah, performance is going to be great for mobility. It's going to be great for multiplanar movement. Symmetry okay. is going to be great to keep your body balanced. Then okay. you get into power lift, and that's the one that's going to take you right to the competition. Right. Okay. So, okay. Sarah, are you um, are you doing this all on your own, or do you plan to have a coach yeah. or anyone? So that was actually my my follow up question was um, if I can find a coach. Um, I have the, a few limits around here. Even the the local competition is is a couple of hours from me, so that's a gym that actually does powerlifting and and they hold meets. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of rural, so <clears throat> within a couple of hours. But actually finding a coach who's familiar with competition around here is going to be a little difficult. Um, and yeah, so I, I I wondered if just working with somebody now would be a good idea, or if I should wait until. I'm a few weeks out from the competition oh, to, you would, to look for someone and make that effort. The sooner the better and yeah. mainly for your technique, yeah. right? So power Just lifting, the mechanics of it. You, you mentioned that you're relatively new to lifting to a lot of this stuff. I totally agree with what they said. I think, Hey, just go, go for it. I love the attitude of like, don't put any limitations on. You need to be this strong before you do just go do it. I think it'll be, a, I think you're going to enjoy it. I think you're going to learn a lot from it. I do think there would be lots of value in having somebody who's proficient in the main lifts mm -hmm. and that could teach you that. And so that doesn't necessarily mean you need to have a power lifting coach, although I think that would be ideal. Mm -hmm. I just would want a, a trainer or a power lifting coach that is proficient in the main lifts. And that's what they're really there to help you with is technique. Yeah. And is also main. with power lifting, because you're going to do the competition. Um, there's a lot of in and ins and outs of the competition day and yeah. what to expect and all that stuff. Even an online powerlifting coach would be valuable. Yeah. They, somebody good. to check in okay. with would be Yeah, someone valuable. you could check in with. You can send video oh. of your your main lifts and then they can tell yeah. you they, yeah. they and if they if they're good powerlifting coaches through video, they'll mm -hmm. be able to give you some good pointers. Um so obviously that, I'm actually I'm already in the forum and oh, um, yeah. I didn't start deadlift. Uh, I didn't start doing deadlifting until about phase two of anabolic because I just had a, a tweaky back and I started with a trap bar. Um, and mm -hmm. then when I finally went to pick up the barbell, I was very humbled <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, and really felt like I just Different wasn't animal. connecting, had no idea what I was doing. And uh, I, I posted in the forum and I mean, I'm just an amazing group of people in there. They were awesome. Um, so I, I've already improved it, but I mean, it's it's a really low lift, but yeah. So I definitely technique is, is definitely something I'm really trying to focus on and, and just being comfortable with the environment. Um, yeah. We probably have yeah. actually a good trainer in I there guarantee it. in yeah. the yeah. forum. I guarantee it. Yeah. You could probably just, I would make an announce. I would make a post and say, Hey, I'm looking for an online powerlifting coach who could help me. And you'll probably find one in the forums. For Especially, sure. yeah, since you can use maps powerlift, they can <coughs> just, you know, keep an eye on your form and, and make sure you're on track. With yeah. what you're doing there. Now you have mass performance, so that would be a good program to go to. Yeah. Yeah. And then no, we'll, I'll do that. we're going to send you symmetry. So follow it up with symmetry and then, okay. awesome. and, Thank you. and then power lift after that. And you should see. So, yeah. And you know, the power lifting community is such a supportive community. They're, they're, they've, yeah. they're one of my favorite strength training communities. It's like, yeah. Man, it's so awesome. They're the all there. Just, everybody cheers for everybody. It's so, it's so great. Yeah, like, it's not like... Yeah. It's yeah, sports. I was really impressed when they... the It was a few days after I contacted them by email and this lady got back to me and she was like, don't even worry about July. She said, we've got to meet in May. It's all ladies. Come out. And I was like, I, I can barely lift the bar. <laughs> <laughs> and she's just like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I'll, I'm going to tell you because I've been to a few... Uh, the first time lifters get the most support. It's so totally. funny. Yeah. 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 They do. It's like everybody just loves, it's just such a great supportive. It's one of my favorite strength training communities and it's a, it's a healthy community. Um, especially in comparison to bodybuilding. Um, so yeah, you're doing, it's gonna be great. Yeah. I, I, I can't wait to hear about what you're happens. in the forum already. So I love it. So just keep us posted, just tag us when you do some updated posts. And so we'll keep an eye on you, do the best we can to help support you. I do think if you can find someone 
to hire, it would it's only going to be that much better for you. But even us, we'll do as much as we can to help support the the journey and excited to see you go through it. Awesome. Excellent. Well, thank you. Look, I really appreciate the feedback you all having me today. And uh, thanks again. Thank uh, you so much, yeah. Sarah. Very, right, very Sarah. happy to hear about this. Thank Take you. Care. Love thanks. it. Bye-bye. Well, that warmed my heart. I, know, right? I wish good one to end on I today. wish more women, especially, uh, entered powerlifting competition. It's happening, right dude. It yeah. really it, is. It's it awesome is. Uh, it's so it doesn't trigger body image issues. I, look, powerlifting can get unhealthy too. Any sport can, but it doesn't trigger body image issues. Yeah. It's so damn supportive. It's not even funny. Like such it, a good foundation to start. Even with. the most competitive powerlifters who want to just crush each other on stage backstage or on when they're doing the lifts it's like high fives and let's make this happen it's a great place to it's, to, it's, it's such especially a great especially for women because i i mean yes i know there's always an exception to the rule but i actually have never met a woman who is taking it too far and unhealthy it's normally yeah. men yeah because we got the crazy egos yes men there. typically go overboard with the unhealthy side of powerlifting. yeah um oh there's some women that can do that sure too. they can yeah. that's what i said there's always an exception rule yeah. but i haven't met one yeah. most women that i know that i've introduced to power lifting it'd be it's very enlightening for them yes yeah. they yeah. normally have they're on the other end of the extreme and so being introduced to training this yep. way is very enlightening and empowering and it ends up being incredible for them so I, I'm glad that we see more of it, so I'm excited to hear totally. her. And I love that she's doing it even this early in her journey. Oh yeah, she great. admits that it's hard for her oh to even God, to deadlift. You know how much you right learn now? from yeah, the kinds of benefits she's uh, going to get from there. She's going to get a lot of a lot of benefits. Yeah. From Look, her. if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our free fitness guides. They can help you get to your fitness goals. You can also find us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump to Stefano, and Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. 